Dude, um, did you go to that go-go rally last night? No, nah, I fell asleep, man. I was mad as shit. Really? Yeah. Dude, I was, I was at home and I was watching the stories and I was like, ah, oh, should I go? Should I not yeah, go? I fell asleep, dog. It was a nice event, too. That was the biggest one he had so far, so that was nice. Dude, that looked crazy. Yeah. That, that, was, was, that crazy. was crazy. I don't yeah, know about I, you, but... I haven't seen nothing like that since, like, Unifest, like, Georgia Avenue Day. But even then, we couldn't even do it like that because it was peaceful, you know what I'm saying? It was mm -hmm. no problems, anything. It was love. It looked like it. Like, I, I was, when I see something like that, I'm like, oh, shit, the streets of D.C., I'm like, I hope nothing pops off because that's not going to be a good look for anyone. Yeah, no why. And then. Because everybody's just, like, all eyes on us, and it's like, soon something happens. It's like, see? But. I mean, I feel like it's good too because it's a lot of people that's from DC that's that that haven't seen that before either, so they doubt it too. Mm -hmm. Like I remember um, the one they had, the last one they had, which was the second one. It was like this dude. He he um, he drove like a a moped through the crowd. You know what I'm saying? So they beat his ass. But <laughs> you know, and, and it was like a little bit of confusion for a little while. People thought that you know a brawl had broke out or whatever, but. Nah, like, I feel like anybody would have did that. That don't have anything to do with, like, D.C. or nothing. Like, it's kids out there. He on a motorized scooter driving through a crowd, you know? That's just being a dumbass. You deserve right, it. That's what I'm saying. Beat. And it's people that left immediately saying, see you, see what happened? We can't never have nothing. Oh, see, I told you it was going to happen. I told you it was going to happen. And got, you know, quick to go on social media. Like, yeah, this is what happened. Don't even know really what happened. And then, um, and then like, just rolled out. But if they would have waited, like, 20, 30 minutes... We got right back to the show, you know what I'm saying? The band got right back to playing and everything, so it did, you know. But I remember when that happened, because I was DJing at the time, and, like, you know, the crowd was like, it was like a wave going through the crowd, and I had my God, I seen my Godson, so I picked him up, and I'm just trying to, like, get him away just in case something was happening. And, like, as I'm walking off, people just like, see, I told you, man, I told you we can't ever do anything, but, you know, we did it, and... It's good that we keep doing it because we showing people that like it's 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 shifting, you know, it's different now. It's not how it was. I don't blame them because I came up, I you know, I'm born and raised in D.C. too. I know how things can go left real quick yeah. and how we got to stay on our p's and q's. But we also got to uh, keep that positive mindset as far as us making progress and us being able to be peaceful together. No, I mean, 100 percent for an event like that, it's. You're kind of sitting there with like a bated breath, like, oh my God, please, yeah, please, please, please. Because sure. this is, it's, it's like the real culture of DC coming out and showing and being like, look, we care about what's going yeah. on in this city. And I don't, for people listening, like that, that all stemmed from the uh, hashtag don't mute DC right. um, sort of wave. And to my knowledge, I'm just going to, because this is something I haven't heard talked about much, at least in my hemispheres. Um, that was a response to the corner of U Street. Yeah. Florida and you, where they have the speaker outside playing go go. Right, they've been having that outside playing go go my whole life. And I went to uh, school on Georgia Avenue, so I heard that every single day. Like I had to pass that store to get home. So that's you know part of the culture. That's what you'll expect. And it even used to be like even more DC because like it used to be a it used to be a picture booth in the um it used to be a picture booth in the uh, parking lot in the CVS. Like every every weekend, like all day and night, like you could go take a picture whenever you wanted to. <laughs> That's so, some random yeah, stuff. <laughs> you could take a picture whenever you wanted to. Dude was out there all night playing a go go, and yeah, nobody complained. Like that's a mecca right there. You know what I'm saying? When we had Georgia Avenue Day, um, that was it was right there at Bannica Field. Um, like everybody like excited about the Mochella, but like what's been going on? Like that, it's it's footage on YouTube from like eighty five, two thousand one. Of us doing the same thing, you know what I'm saying? So that, and that's all within those four blocks, you know what I'm saying? With U Street, Georgia Avenue, like that's like historical go go landmark. And that's like the most gentrified part of the city. But yeah. coming from DC, like honestly, I feel safer. I feel safer in big crowds in DC than anywhere else. I, I guess because I'm from here, but I understand the threat that it can pose to people though. So. Mm. I mean, especially in a spot like that where you literally have. Uh, the go-go stuff on the corner and then mm -hmm. across the block you have these brand spanking new by like 5,000 yeah. a month apartments for sure and those are the guys complaining yeah for sure and they they, they stopped that early they because it all stopped I mean the last the last like big event I can remember DC having was Georgia Avenue Day mm -hmm. which was slash the Caribbean Fest and the last one they had was um, maybe 2011 or 12 but it was just getting so crazy because People was coming from all over, like just to fight. So they, oh, 
Oh, they, really? Yeah, they they ended that. We haven't had that since in probably like seven years, seven, eight years. And so, I mean, I got that's kind of like where we come from. As far as like big gatherings, every time it was something, like people knew, like Georgia Avenue Day, you're going to see whoever you need to see, and you can handle your business if you want to. I mean, it was like, it was kind of respective because it's it's a lot of neighborhoods going on Georgia Avenue. Those neighborhoods, they didn't start any of that. It mostly just be like people like in between those neighborhoods, like just walking on the street, people that's not even from Uptown, not even from Georgia Avenue, making it look bad. And they make it seem like the neighborhoods was preying on the parade, where really it was just people coming from all over the parade just to see people and fight them. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But that's where we come from, man. Um, I feel like that's where, that was like, that was, that's when Georgia Avenue started changing as far as like, 2009 and so by 2011 they was fed up they like man we paying too much money to stay around here y'all can't keep having this festival you know what I'm saying I guess mm. so they canceled it and um we came back stronger and now we now it's it's like perfect timing because now we get it now it's like man you know we gotta we gotta come correct if we wanna if we wanna preserve the culture we can't keep that same that old culture the old culture is you know a little bit of fun a little bit of violence um but the new culture is just peace, you know, peace and, you know, just we got a responsibility more than before because before, you know, we just run around with our heads cut off. We don't <laughs> we don't think like, man, you know, nobody would ever thought that they would end Georgia Avenue Day. You know what I'm saying? It's been going on forever, yeah, but it ended. That. Yeah, it ended. And then after that, it's like we don't have nothing. And since then, we don't have no celebration of D.C. culture. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's nothing like that And until we, you know, they brought back, shout out to Yadia, he brought back the... The go go on U Street, uh, uh, Mochella. Dang, I, I kept seeing the hashtag Mochella. Yeah, Mochella. Um, Who's Mo? Mo is just anybody, whoever. Oh, like oh, like shit, like more. Nah, it's Mo. Oh, Mo is so it's so DC. Um, so old heads in DC, and like if somebody don't know, even if they do know your name, they call you like Joe. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, Joe. Oh, come here, Joe. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like uh, the younger generation, like. Dudes like my my generation, we just started saying Mo. I don't know how or where it came from, but Mo. So like anybody could be Mo. So like when you see someone instead of being like, Yo, what's up, man? Like, what's up, Mo? Yeah, what's up, Mo? Yeah, hey, that's that's <laughs> like that's like the DC way. If you if somebody saying Mo, they from they from the DMV for sure. But yeah, Mo is anybody. Mo Slim. Uh, yeah. Damn, how do you know that? <laughs> they putting me on to some stuff. But going back to the to the whole uh, Go Go event, the Domi DC event is. It felt like that was. Everyone kind of had a reason. There was something to get behind because mm-hmm. it was, it seems like it was the, one of the first times, at least from what I, my experience mm-hmm. is, that the culture of DC had a tangible thing to stand up for right. and it, like a very obvious signs of like the problems of gentrification. And this isn't a gentrification show. I just want right. to talk about this, that event because that's, that's, it's, that's, relevant. that's it's really yeah. relevant for DC and just historical in a lot of ways. And it's like, that's why everyone's kind of like, yo, we got to be peaceful because this is yeah. us showing the man, showing those people up in DC, those those political people. Like, look, it's, not, it's, not, it's not all about just taking a stand. It's about, it's, it's about the culture and, and, yeah. what, and what we mean by that is like, is people coming here in D.C. and moving here and not getting the taste of the culture, you know what I'm saying? So when they hear, when they hear, um, you know, loud music on the corner, they don't even know what it is, and they complain about it. But if they knew what, what it was and what it meant to us and the history behind it, they would be like, oh, okay, that's cool. All right, we understand it. Or they could even, you know, come embrace it with us, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it's a part of the culture. It's like, I'm not going to go to a country and and, you know, just come and just do my American thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, like, if I go to Mexico, for example, I'm, I'm going to taste some of their food, I'm going to listen yeah, to their music. Get embrace I'm not, not going to walk down the street and say, why are they playing this music this loud, man? Cut it off. I don't want to hear that. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro, turn your mariachi you living, out. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? It's like, nah, it's like, nah, you living is, in Mexico. What yeah, do you expect? The and that's fuck? the same thing for DC. It's like, just, and we just want y'all to embrace it. Like, and I feel like that would, that, that's a lot of people are mad at gentrification because they think it's just a bunch of white people that don't care about black people. Mm-hmm. And it's not their fault, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not blaming anybody that's moving here to try and help, you know, the economy or whatever. But at the same time, it's like coming from DC, uh, since the early eighties, like a lot of a lot of things get stolen from us, like whether it's our uh whether it's like our style, fashion, um, even even like from the early days with Go-Go never being recognized on the national scale, you know what I'm saying? We kind of swallowed that pill and said, you know what? All right, well, it's ours. You know what I'm saying? At least it's ours, but we're going to protect it. 
And, you know, when we got people moving here and they're not, you know, on that same initiative to protect the culture, then that's when it's a problem. Because you, they're just so disconnected from it. They're just so you know, disconnected it's, it's from it. You almost assume that there's not much or that you know, but really I think when that's people move I'm in, saying. they don't know. But, we don't, but it's like, it's like no, it's like no, like, liaison for DC. It's like you, I, I don't really blame people because it's, I, don't, I, I can imagine coming from somewhere else and trying to tap into the culture. It's you like you have to saying? educate, like, hey, welcome to DC. This yeah, is Mumbo yeah. Sauce. This is yeah, you got to find like, people. You got to find people, and you got to, you know, get them to show you around and tell you about everything. That's what I, because that's what I do when I go other places. You know what I'm saying? I want to find somebody. Most of the time, when I go somewhere else, I'm trying to go to the hood, see what see what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Just see. Why do you want to go to the hood? Because that's where I'm from. Mm. I feel comfortable there. It's good. I, I know how to talk to them. I know how to move there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so everywhere I go, I just at least see it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, man respect, man, it's a way to, it's a way to move. It's like a universal language as far as how to move when you're in different places. So it's like I don't never really feel threatened because I come with respect, you know what I'm saying? So that's what it comes down to is just, you know, we just, it, we got to, it's not just, you know, museums downtown. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's, that's like one thousandth of what DC right. actually is. <laughs> Thank you. And, and that's like where everyone goes. But yeah. when you actually go up the street and go north anywhere from there, just pretty much north. Um, it's it's what you actually see. Yeah. And you gotta I feel like people just gotta see that and they gotta just know where they are, know what's going on, the history behind it. And I feel like after that, you know, conversation and they could we could have a common ground on like what it means to us, what our culture means to us and their responsibility and just respecting it. Mm. Do you feel like you're kind of taking that mantle a little bit, like trying to become the liaison, or is it um, just like eh, I'm, I, do it? I, I want to be. I, I want to be. Um, it's plenty of people, you know, fighting the same fight. Uh, people that was been doing it way longer than me. But if I could, you know, if I could, you know, be a translator for, you know, the people coming in and the natives, then mm -hmm. yeah, of course, I, I would love for us to be able to all be together and you know party. I want to see more. White people at Mochella, you know. I want them to come out and dance with us, you know. If, if DC is going to be, if, if if DC is going to be what it's changing to be, then let's just keep the love at least. Because mm. I mean, when I was coming up, it was all Chocolate City. That's all I knew. They used to call DC Chocolate City. Yeah, 100%. and now if it's not going to be Chocolate City no more, let's at least just keep the keep the the love there. Because Chocolate City was like love, like we love, you know. Being it's a bunch of black people here and we all, you know, we love, we love the city, but. It's the, that love, you know what I'm saying? That's still there. We could just keep that at, at least and just say, all right, this is the new this the new DC, but it's the same culture. You know what I'm saying? Everybody understand the culture. We we understand where DC came from. Mm -hmm. but we're not going to let that fade away. It's changing a little bit, and we're going to try to help each other out. You know what I'm saying? And that's a super positive way to look at it. It's like no matter where you are, especially a place like this, changing so, so fast and just like staying positive and just, and just kind of staying on the side of like, all right, it's changing. I don't know how much we can do about it. Right. Let's try to embrace it and, and, and educate people. And it's such it. a small place, man. And I feel like a lot of like I'm, I'm, I feel all the time. I walk down the street. I feel all the time that like they just like we just gonna have our city taken away from us. Damn. Because this place, I feel like this city easier than any city in the country. Like it's easy to just come and just take it away and then just put something new. You it, know, it does feel. It's only like so. Like it's it only but so much space left, and then it's like. They outnumber us. I mean, like, eventually it's going to be the people that's coming in versus the natives, and they're going to outnumber us, you know what I'm saying? Because the people that's in people that's in my generation, we can't afford houses. Mm -hmm. um, we can't afford houses, like, anywhere uptown, you know what I'm saying? Some parts of Northeast, um, Southwest, definitely not, you know what I'm saying? So, and I'm I'm scared, you know? I know, I, I know I'm setting myself up so I could be able to raise my kids in D.C., but... It's not gonna be the same DC, and it's like for what if they're not gonna get the same experience? But in the same token, it's like I couldn't imagine raising my family anywhere else. Yeah, it'd be and it's hard. a lot of people like damn, like my kids not gonna be able to. You know what I'm saying? It's it's DC where you you go to your first party when you're 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? You go to your first go go, and it's like I went. I remember going to college and telling people that, and they're like, man, I wasn't going to parties until like. Unless my school had a party. I'm like, bro, we had a party every day, every day of the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know what I'm saying? We had something to do. That's how 
that's how we became social. That's how we know how to talk to people. That's how we know how to move around. You know what I'm saying? Because if you was partying, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't be like a sucker. And so, I mean, so you had to, you just had to know how to move. You had to know how to talk to people. You had to know how to have respect. Mm -hmm. You had to know how to have heart, all that. And that's a part of our culture. You know what I'm saying? Not 100%. I mean, when you, when you look at history, anytime anyone came to a foreign land and they had, I guess, like more technology, more money, mm -hmm. we all know how that turns yeah, out. Yeah, wipe them out. It, it, it's the, 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 <laughs> they end up winning somehow. And right. it's like, oh, what are you going to do now? It's like, are we going to get with it or just it's it's a sticky situation man yeah, it's it, really it's, sticky it's crazy and like i grew up on the outside of it i grew up in, in northern virginia close to dc i didn't i never grew up in the city like you i only had my perspective and at night 95.5 90.9 be right. playing go-go so mm -hmm. i grew up with it and i was and i but i never understood the whole culture behind it until i've been in the city and i talked to people like yourself and like, just to hear how much it means is is is, is really crazy man like it's, yeah, it's it, cool it means a lot man and especially because like and then we just and then I know for our generation, we kind of pissed off at like the older generation because like they, they kind of, they, I don't blame them. All right, so in D.C. coming up, it's like, all right, you go to school, graduate high school. Mm -hmm. Most people going to tell you like, you know, try to get a government job. That's what most people in your family going to do probably it's, it's anyway. Comfy, yeah. Get a government job. Um, everybody, mom, want to move out the hood. So... It came to a point where people was coming to buy and, and and people wasn't hesitating to sell. But I'm not mad at it. You know, the grandparents that was selling, I'm more mad at the kids that wasn't, you know, right in the right position to take over. So it's like, now, but now you got my generation coming up and we like, shit, man. Like, you know, we wish our parents had some land, mm -hmm. you know, to give us. We we come from, you know, our grandparents had houses and most of us was raised in like apartments. You know what I'm saying? So we we um we never had the opportunity you know to to, to take over a, a mortgage and, and stay in DC it was like you know once you know mom moved out of Maryland it was like you know what I'm saying uh, like there wasn't that family house yeah, here that for you for it wasn't, family to and, pass and, on and, and i hear stories about it all the time i was in my uber last week and this guy was telling me how they had a, a house on north capitol street um uh, the 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 mom died but you know, one of the kids was in a financial position, so they had to sell the house, sold it for eight hundred thousand dollars, and sold it for eight hundred thousand dollars, and um, I think he said like two thousand and six or something like that. But the dude they sold it to, he uh, he renovated all three floors, and he's selling all three floors like separately for like four fifty. He you know knew what he was saying? doing. You don't go into that deal not knowing what you're. That was in, doing. and that was in. That was like, like right after he sold it. So I can only imagine what the price is on that joint now. So that's a good. But deal. it's like yeah. that's heartbreaking stories. You know what I'm saying? For us, like people, like you know, my generation is trying to preserve the culture and that that dream, uh, that that wish of raising our kids on in DC, having them be able to go outside, catch the bus to school, get on the metro, go see their friends. You know what I'm saying? Walk to the corner store. Go to the basketball court, you know what I'm saying? You can't do that too many places out of Maryland. That's where they're moving us. But that's what I, you know, that's what we want. We and want that same thing for our kids. That kind of makes sense. I mean, where else are you going to go? You got to go out, and that's it's straight to Maryland. Yeah, and, and Maryland is like, I don't even got sidewalks some places in Maryland, man. <laughs> I mean, but that, that's that's the cool part about D.C. that I was always envious of someone like you who grew up in the city. I'm like, dang, you got the Metro. Man, like, man yeah, I, I remember the metro. the metro used to be 24 hours, too. So like, Oh, yeah, I remember that, too. Being a youngin', you know, just like... Young and wild, 16 years old, you know what I'm saying? I remember, like, going across town to see a girl and, and like, walking to the walk into the metro, like, 3 a.m. Like right there. I'm so jealous because I, I probably would have had a kid get, right now scared, if I had the scared if I'm going to be that. jumped or something, you know what I'm saying? But that's, like, <laughs> that's all the things you love about, like, that's all the things you, you grow to love, you know what I'm saying? I remember, like, leaving the go-go and walking with my man, like, all the way up Georgia Avenue, like, from... Shaw Howard all the way up to like four tie, you know what I'm saying? Just to get home from the go go, you know? Damn. That's like the culture. That's like part of the culture I want my kids to see. Of course, it ain't safe, but I mean, I don't know. It's just like you love. gotta know how to move in those. Yeah, situations. you just you teach you teach people how to you you could teach your kids how to move in those situations. Like that's danger is inevitable, mm -hmm. but it's like things like that you can't do anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? We don't. That's all we know. That's like that's us. You know, I want my kids to be able to experience the same things because I feel like that made me who I am. And I don't know. I feel like being from D.C. is an advantage in society and the world, especially when you go other places. 
Yeah. Shit, everywhere, everywhere we go, people love us. Everywhere I've been, you know, people gravitate towards me. People love me. You know what I'm saying? I go to, and then I'm, I'm I, I realized that in college, and then I'm going to like visit my men that was at other schools, and like, you know, they the talk of the school too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, it's a DC thing. So yeah, it's just real special, man. I, I, it's hard to explain. When <laughs> when you were growing up, did you? I mean, I don't know, but did you, did you ever? How do I phrase this? Did you ever think you'd be doing something that you're doing now that would have such an impact in the city that you're living in? Yeah, I um, I always knew I would like be like big. I know I, I knew I would like help you got change. That feeling? Yeah, I knew I would change people's lives, and I remember uh, I don't know, it's just like the way my mom raised me. So I just remember one time I'll never forget it. Like this one lady. Um, so my mom was an educator, mm-hmm. and like fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And a little bit of like kindergarten, I went to the same school she taught at. And I remember one day, like this lady, I'm, I'm just like on a computer, and this lady was picking up her kids. And she stopped and she was like, um, she was just like asking me a couple questions and stuff like that about what I want to do, what I want to be when I grow up. And she was just telling my mom, like, your son's going to be amazing. Like, he's going to like, I don't, she was just telling him, like, she was just telling him, like, I was going to be amazing. And I never was like, you know, going around here yeah, telling people I was gonna be amazing. It was just like, I wonder what's what's gonna like what's gonna be my break. Mm-hmm. It was only a matter of time because like, I don't know. I I always had friends. Like growing up, I'm my mom's only child. I always had friends. I always went outside. I used to always hang like hang out with my cousins. That's all you can do as an only child. Yeah, I but I like I lo- I used to love school. Um, I, I feel like I always been my own person. I made everything I like to do. I made it cool. Like even if it wasn't cool, like. School, like elementary school, I want to, I want to spell and be, I want to like a black history be. I was my class, I was my class president. I was on a basketball team in the fourth grade, like starting. Damn. Um, and like, I, I, even in middle school, I was the same way. Like I was just like a social person in high school. Um, ninth and 10th grade, I struggled. I was like, just trying to be funny and chase girls for real. Um, <laughs> I mean, but like, ninth, ten. yeah, yeah. But I had, you know, refocus. I got back, you know, back to playing sports 11th and 12th grade. Switch schools. Um, I was like the quarterback for varsity. I was the new kid, so it was like I, people knew. Uh, people always knew who I was. I always knew who people were. It seems but like you I have that like, like that like leadership sort of quality. Yeah, I got always. like a leadership quality. That's what it is. I got a leadership. Quality. That's that's definitely what it is. Um, it's like a certain gene. But I got that from only... football though. I got that from football because I met my I met my father when I was five, and then like that next weekend he introduced me to my big brother. Mm-hmm. And we went to his football game. As soon as we went in the game, oh, that's a lot happening fast. Yeah, as soon as we went in the game, like 88, 88 caught a caught a bomb and he scored. And he was like, yeah, that's your brother. So after that, I was like, shit, I'm gonna play football. <sighs> I went out the next year. I suck. You know what I'm saying? My brother, the best player in the whole organization, and everybody know I'm his little brother. I was some trash. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they only put me on the field because I was his brother. And um, but you know, I felt the pressure of it and. I was just now. I was just learning football, and I remember like that first year. You know, I was playing like with all my friends and stuff. It was most of our first year, and we, I think, we won the same amount of games we lost. But like every time we lost, every time we lost, like my whole team, we a bunch of you know five and six year olds. My team used to cry, and I used to be the person like, man, it's gonna be all right. But every time we won, I was the only person crying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just happy that we won. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to work hard. I, I wanted to be good. I didn't want to let you know my brother down. Hit the little brother syndrome. Where you're like, I, I want to be better. Right. Than and once too. I, I was like a tight end at first, but once I seen how everything was working, I was like, man, I want to be a quarterback. So that next year, I, I wanted to be quarterback, and I, I tried out for quarterback. And at that age, you mostly just you know handing the ball off, selling fakes. I was the best person to hand the ball off and selling fakes. And by that next year, that next summer, I learned how to throw and everything. And so. I established myself. People see where I came from, like, because all of us came up, like, we mostly, everybody I played with, I played with nine times out of, like, 90% of them I played with them more than five years. So we kind of grew up together, yeah. you know, and they seen where I came from. Like, it was some people that came off the bench just like me and seen me, like, playing quarterback and being a leader and being that person to pick whoever up, you know, when we down and when we're up. I'm just, you know, grateful, just encouraging everybody. So... I always been the leader. Like fourth quarter, people look at me. 
You know, and I, and I love that. You know, that's why that's that's what I live for. Dude, you know, that's literally it right there. It's like who is that guy that when I the love pressure's that, on who wants to take that penalty kick? I love that. I never forget. Like, I never forget, man. My senior year, my senior year, um, my senior year of high school, we was playing Roosevelt, and it, it was my birthday. It was my actual birthday. You know what I'm saying? And we come out terrible. First half, it was eighteen and nothing. Whew. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. So, but you know, we it's they 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 uh blow the horn for halftime and everything. And my coaches and we walk into the end zone. My coaches, you know, going to the end zone. I just tell them like, man, just stay right here for me. Let me holler at the team. I went over there. I was like, bro, we not gonna lose this game. Like, but the type of leader I was, they believed in me. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't we didn't have the best mob. Um, you know, it, it was like. It wasn't like a neighborhood school where we where kids were, you know, forced to come there. You had to like apply to get in. So it was mostly people there for academics. Oh. So we had the best mob, but I'm not the type of person every time we down to be like, man, we're not gonna lose this game. You know, I'm gonna be real, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna fight, whatever. Sometimes I had to go in there and say, look, we might lose the game, but we're not gonna lose the fight. But in that instant, I was like, man, we're not gonna lose this game. And sure enough, we came back, uh, came out after halftime, they blocked the kick. Uh, Damn. Blocked the kick, we drove down the field, threw one touchdown, threw another touchdown, and then it's like 40 seconds left. And my coach like, man, I don't really, like, what you want to do? You know what I'm saying? We like halfway down the field. And so I was like, we just call the best play. So it's just play where, you know, we fake it, fake the screen. My man just go up the scene. I just throw him a bomb. And we scored with 40 seconds left. <sighs> and so it, it was, and I feel like that, like it's that type moment. of, and, and I feel like, you know, that was early on in the season, so a lot of my teammates was like, man, like he he the real deal. And that's like what I do in life, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a show and tell type person. Um, so That's the moment right there. It's like you pulled through for your team and after yeah. that everyone's like, all right, I after believe, that is, it. Yeah. I believe in after this that, dude that, now. After that, they run through a wall for me. You gotta you know, have, that's the type of things like you got to do because that's like, that's the that's how I receive leadership, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I learned leadership like just from my coaches, how they were always consistent, never took a day off, and how they were committed. You know, to us, to the program, to every single player. Mm-hmm. So that's why I kind of learned it from. But and then, um, and then uh, I had good grades. You know, I, like I told you, my mom was an educator. So at the end of practice, when they was talking about school, they always were telling everybody to be like Malik because he got good <laughs> grades. <laughs> I mean, that that's like nice. So it seems. I wouldn't say it was pressure though, but it was like I received it. Like with all the adults telling me who I was at a young age, it like they put that confidence in me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's very important to speak that in the kids. You know, so... Yeah, kids, man, you tell you them anything and they'll believe them. it. So when you tell them some stuff like, yo, you're going to be great when man, you're going to... Yeah, gonna... like, the, like all those things, like that's, those are things I never forget. I guess that's kind of like how those rappers never forget how their teacher told them they wouldn't be shit. Like, well, all those adults telling me I would I would be something and, and them using me in ex, as an example, it, it, it wasn't pressure. It just let me know who I was. It was like further validation, you know? Mm. And, that was, and I was just comfortable with being me. I mean, it's, that's a lot of pressure. It's, it's one of those things where like, shit, you can almost overthink it and not, and not I do it. I wasn't thinking that at all because my, <laughs> my mom just always kept me humble. Like, I don't know what it was. Like, I, I never considered myself better than nobody, but I was, I'm the best person I could be. You mm. know what I'm saying? And, I'm not gonna go in any situation thinking I'm gonna lose. Like I'm, I'm supposed to win because it's for me. You know what I'm saying? Just, just come down to confidence. Like, and I'm not a quitter. You know, I ain't never been a quitter. And that's like I feel like I learned that from, from football too. You know what I'm saying? After we said our prayer every day, we used to chant, "I'm not a quitter. I won't quit." We used to say that like five, ten times, like all, like until we basically got off the field. And it's like, you know, those things make a difference, you know, in, in life. And I, and it's not just me. I look at, like, my friends that come from the organization, and I look like my, at my friends that play for other organizations in the city. And a lot of organizations came round up 15 dudes, you know, that came through the program tried and true that's really out here doing something positive for their community, for themselves, staying out the way, mm-hmm. um, college degrees, never been locked up, you know, like that. And that's that's very rare, but that's just, you know, that's just a testament to, like, how great the Beacon House organization is. Shout out to Beacon House. Because, like, and it's amazing because it's like they did all that greatness in one of the worst neighborhoods in Northeast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I noticed you, you do with, a lot of, you do give back a lot with, yeah, with your company sure. and everything you do. I always see you out there. At least for sure. I mean, the, I just feel like that's my, I feel like that's that's my responsibility, you know what I'm saying? I don't have kids or anything. Um, so 
Knock on no, this I plastic want kids. table. I want plenty of kids. Oh, you want kids <laughs> yeah. now? Oh, I man, want careful. Family. Yeah, I want family. So I feel like, you know, that's just like me being responsible. Like, mm-hmm. my, I, I remember seeing my mom on a teacher's salary, like, you know, bust her, bust her butt to take care of me and my cousin. Because my cousin always, even though I'm my only child, my cousin always lived with me. You know what I'm saying? So I was like my brother. Damn, I had that same story, man. Yeah. I'm the only child and my cousin lived with my me too. My cousin always lived with me. You know, my aunt, I, I used to see my aunt and stuff all the time, but he just lived with us. I don't I don't know why, but he just lived with us. So um, Those are like those things you find out at like a family cookout or something. You're like, oh, well, that's why? Like, shit. I know. I don't know. Maybe one day we had that conversation. So how, how, how does your story go from like sports star to getting into clothing? Um, so I knew every, I knew mostly people I made, I'm, you know, I knew most, most people from like sports playing around in the city, you know what I'm saying? Being a good player in the city, but it was also from like the go-go and like just school, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just, just being, just being out, you know? So I had like a network already and, um, after high school, went to college, I didn't play sports in college, you know? Um, Where'd you go to school? Virginia State. Okay. I went to Virginia State just to like, I mean, I always knew, like, approaching my senior year, I knew I had to go to college because I didn't, I didn't want to get conditioned, like out of high school, working a job, and then becoming a manager, and then five years later, wishing I would have went to school. Yeah, you can get stuck in that yeah, vortex you, real quick. I seen a lot of people get conditioned. If they didn't get conditioned with working, they got conditioned with the streets. Period. Like it was only one or two things to do after high school. So I knew I was going I knew I had to go to college. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't have a plan. And I wasn't like really scared of college because I would look at like some of my teachers or some of the other people that I knew, like that had degrees, and I'm like, man, if they could do it, I can do it. You know, that's always been my thing. Like if I seen somebody do something, I know I can do it. But not not only do it, like I know I could do it better. And I know I could take it to the next level. And that's why I try to like teach kids, like just take it to the next level, you know. But that's what that was like my thing. So I never like sweated it. I never was really tripping. I was like, you know, I had like a teacher. I thought he was an idiot. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, if he got accepted into college, I know I'm gonna get accepted. I, if he graduated, I know definitely I can graduate. And if he's a teacher, then I know worst come to worst, I can be a teacher too. Yeah, and he said he had a good grade. So yeah, shit, yeah. what else? What's holding you back? Yeah, and that's that what I'm point? saying. So I got to school and I realized it was a big party. And early on, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have to make sure I get these grades so I can keep partying. And that was my motivation. I ain't had no plan. Um, my junior yeah, year, I met this man. girl. I went in her room one day. She had a camera. And um, that's when I just started taking pictures crazy. Like, I told myself everything, like, with the camera, like, off YouTube or just going out and shooting every day. Yeah, I heard you say you were trying to be a professional photographer before yeah, you I was trying. Anything. Yeah, I was trying to just do the photography thing. And Damn. then, um, so... Uh, yeah, I just started branding myself with the photography thing, and it like it started. It got to a point where like I was just known around the around the schools just being a photographer, cause I I would take my camera and just take pictures of every, people every day, pretty girls, people with nice outfits, just like your life, just whatever it was, like candid shots. Or nah, I was style. I was specifically trying to like, I was specifically trying to like get my work noticed. Mm. So it was like I would um, I take pictures of people that you know like. Especially if like they was from another place, like from another state. Yeah. I'll take pictures of them and you know, if it's a nice picture, people gonna wanna repost it. And I'm just like, all right, you put it on your Instagram, just make sure you tag me. <laughs> the secret sauce is just take a picture of a rapper with film. And there you I'm go. Saying. It's like it's like the recipe now. Just <laughs> yeah. do that and all that. Hey, you only gotta take it with film now. They got all these filters on Photoshop. <laughs> you can make sh- digital look like film. Shit's yeah, crazy. Just throw a couple of those bad boys on. I'm it. like, bro, how did you get that film developed that quick? That's I wanted right. the same thing. Yeah, they be cheating, man. It's filters. But anyway, um, so I'm taking pictures of them, you know, like, and I'm taking pictures of them consistently. So it's like their friends from other places, like, man, who is this photographer, dude? I'm just trying to get my followers up and everything. And then, like, I remember, like, within, like, months of just learning how to take pictures, the CIAA, that's the conference Virginia State is, I mean, the, the conference they're in. Um, they gave me a job to shoot, like, the spring championships. They paid me, like, $300 to take pictures at a baseball game. And that's chill. Tracking, some track and field. And I ain't even had the right camera, you know what I'm saying? But hey, when you're in college, yeah. it was like y'all pay 300 bucks. I had an 18 to 55 millimeter lens, like trying to take sports photos. But I know exactly the way what I kind was of setup you're talking and about. And then I was just finessing it, you know what I'm saying? And so um, I just became known as a a, a camera a cameraman. Um, but it's, you said you were putting your 
was it the eat watermark on the photos? Yeah, I wasn't doing that yet. So I, I branded myself. I started branding myself probably. Uh, I I wasn't. I it was like unconsciously branding myself. So when I first got to school, I was used to being, you know, at home. At home, I was used to having money. You know what I'm saying? I always been good with money. I always been an entrepreneur, a hustler. Like I remember, I used to go up to the market. And I was the only kid that they they used to let in without like a, a vendor's license. And I used to go to the market, and one of the places in the market had all these snapbacks. Like 2008, like snapbacks was like just coming on the scene, you know, getting yeah. hot. They had every NFL team, every NBA team, every college team. The flat ones, they keep the sticker on. All them jumps with the green, it. with the green brim in the inside. Yeah. These didn't even have stickers, like these, like vintage. For oh. real, like these ones had dust on them. I used to have to go clean them. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? These like really from like the 80s. And um, I used to buy those for like six to eight dollars, sell them for like 15, 12 to 15 dollars. And like on the regular, you know, and I had I always had a summer job. It's a flip right there. Um, I worked there, I started working at Safeway when I was uh 16. I just always had a hustle. I was always in school making some money, like gambling or something. I just always had income, you know what I'm saying? I always had money. And I look back on it now, I look at like my old go-go pictures now. I, I remember like going to to the go-go maybe like twice a month. And like once I got older, like once I got to high school, I, I was just trying to be fly, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't about sweating and partying no more on the go-go, it was about seeing the chicks. <laughs> so I remember like I wouldn't even go to the go-go unless I had a brand new outfit with the brand new shoes that just came out. And then when I got there, I took like, I had to take like four, four or five pictures all the pictures was ten dollars, and I'm like, "Where did I get this money from?" You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even remember, but because I I just always had a way of making money, and so Wait, it was, what do you mean the pictures were ten dollars? To take a picture in the go-go, you had to pay ten dollars. Like in the picture booth, it was oh $10. oh, in the picture yeah. booth, okay, it was ten dollars. Okay. It wasn't nobody had you know with your nice ass outfit on. Yeah, yeah like, nobody had smartphones and all on. that. It was ten dollars, and um, like I like my senior year, my senior year, I drove a BMW. Damn. Yeah, like my my car was better than. Everybody's except my except the principals. And you got that yourself? Yeah. Damn. It, it was me and my mom. So my mom, my mom, like, she she always like recognized how I how I was with money. Like I mm-hmm. I would save every penny, you know what I'm saying? I had crazy amounts of money, like being young. And being good in football and everything, I had a lot of uh I had like Gonzaga and St. John's wanted me to uh go there. And so um is that a college or a high school? That's no, a high school. It's a high, high school. school. And so uh, they wanted me to play football, but they wasn't at that time. It it wasn't it like it wasn't no um, like full scholarships in high school. Like yeah. it wasn't nobody was paying that tuition. Like schools weren't even allowed to do that. I don't think. Oh, yeah. So um, you know the coaches was in our ear a lot, but my mom was like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you don't go to if you don't go to uh, if you don't want to if you don't go to a private school, you know you can go to a public school, and your senior year you can get a car. You know what I'm saying? That's and not a bad deal right there. Yeah, so I was like, all right, bet. In my mind, I'm like, I'm going to get a BMW. <laughs> so uh, um, so it came the time I got my license and everything, and I was like, yeah, you know, I got this amount of mo- this much money, you know what I'm saying? You put this in your name, and, you know, I had me a nice little BMW. Hey. Had to had to work on it a little bit, but. Damn, you were whipping it, too. Senior year? Yeah, my senior year. God. I had, like, you know, yeah, like a BMW. So first, was that your first car, too? That was my first car. Damn, my first car was a so, Monte Carlo, like two hundred thousand miles on it. <laughs> no, nah, this John was nice though. I got that John was nice. It was like a two thousand. It was blue. Um, it had leather seats, like caramel leather seats. But that's where I come. That's where I came from. You know what I'm saying? And my freshman year, like, I'm broke as hell because I don't got no job in college. Yeah, my mom sending like fifty dollars. You know, whenever she can. That's hard to work in school too. Every other week, you know what I'm saying? And so it was like one day my friends was going to Chick Fil A. And I'm checking my car. I had 81 cents. So I was like, you know, I just went back to my room. and I was just crying. I was like, man, whatever whatever I do from now on, like, I don't care what I got to do. I'm going to eat good. If I want to have steak every day of the week, I'm going to have it. That's a, that's a real feeling right there. Like, I think that's a feeling that people need to have right there. Like, that's... For sure. And I feel like, you know, it. it my, my life is built on a, a series of unfortunate but most fortunate events. And... From that point on, I I I, I started selling weed. You know what I'm saying? I started with, you know, a little bit, and by the end of my freshman year, I had pounds in my dorm room. Damn. So 
I was so bad at after that. Dude. After that, I wasn't. I wasn't worried That's about good. nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it was. Just, it was. It was like, all right. I'm at, I'm in college. I got my freedom. I got some money. It's girls. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing well in school. I always had like. I never had anything below a 3.0, and so um. But I ain't. I ain't consider myself a drug dealer at that time. You know what I'm saying? I never consider myself like it's. Yeah, you're you going to college, school. You're, yeah, you're when you're in college weed selling weed, homies, yeah. it's not like you're like in the streets. You're selling college like, selling, but, yeah, college so you're selling like the bros. Easy, all right. the bros like, let me get an eighth, bro. And you're like, yeah, yeah come come over. <laughs> I got you. Like College selling weed easy. So that's what I was on. And um, like, you know, my junior year happened. I got the camera. And then my senior year, uh, that summer, like when I used to come home, I ain't touch none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I used to, I didn't have to, but it was like, I used to sit, I used to come home for break. Any break, and I used to just be like, well, summer break was the only time my mother really was tripping. But I used to come home for break, and I used to just be like chilling, you know what I'm saying? Like, come home like with all these shoes, new clothes. Like, but I used to, I came home like that after my junior year. And it's like two weeks. I'm just chilling because I got money, you know what I'm saying? I got money saved up. I can yeah. go through this whole summer break like, from school. You're, yeah, what else? He has take to some do. trips and all that. I right. got like a nice amount saved up. My mother like, you need to get a job. You're not about to just be sitting around here. And um, so I just got a job. Um, I was working at like I was like a bar back. I, I wanted to. I feel like that was cool. And I could just out. see women. Yeah. Be at a bar. I feel like that was you know just something chill. I ain't want to go back to Safeway. Drink for free. Or, hang out. Or get like an internship. I ain't care for that. You know what I'm saying. So I always had a job. And um, so I, I, I uh, at the end of that summer, I bought my own camera. Went back to school in August. You know what I'm saying. I'm going real hard, taking my pictures and everything. And then on my birthday. My, on September 25th, 2013, my uh, that was my 21st birthday. So I was like, you know, I'm about to come back to D.C., uh, go to the club and everything. I'm 21 now because it wasn't nothing to do in Petersburg, Virginia. And um, I remember, like, I was, I left around, like, 5 o'clock. No, I, I probably left, like, 6.30. And by, like, 8 o'clock, I was getting all these calls from, like, my neighbors and everybody that lived in my, uh, like, the lofts I was staying in. And um, police was raiding my house, so they had they was telling me like they had everybody your, your DC home. Nah, and in, in in school they was raiding my apartment in school. Oh so, shit! Um, I remember like it was a Friday, so like you know my homies used to come over on Friday. We used to play FIFA and you know kick the shit and all that. So I remember uh, like it was probably like four or five of us in there. It was like four or five of us in there, right? And then um, that's when uh, yeah, they just called me. It was like. The girl next door, she was like, yeah, the police got everybody in handcuffs. Um, There's dogs in your house, and they taking all your stuff. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, hold on. Let me fix this camera. Yeah, it's all good. Boy, not good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> they was like, um, yeah. Dude, that's that's so a crazy like, yeah. feeling. So Your I'm on my way. Like, yeah, so I'm on my way to like think, you know, to have a good time, you know, step out Friday night on my way to my mom's house, and I'm just like getting a play by play of this raid. Whoa. And so um that's when I was like, all right, you know, it's whatever. Like I knew what was going on. I knew it was a matter of time, like before you go to school, you hear plenty of stories. Like I remember this girl I was dating, she was telling me how her father's like the smartest dude she know. And how he went to school, but then he got caught selling weed. And you hear so many stories about that. Like, you know what I'm saying? But getting caught selling weed back then, you get in way more trouble some than you do now. More, yeah, you you definitely do. People caught selling weed in school, getting kicked out, kicked out. You know what I'm saying? So I knew, I knew like if oh, I was, I knew if I didn't get locked up. And I feel like everybody knows this when they up to no good. Like if I knew if I if if I did, if I if I didn't get locked up, somebody was gonna ro try to rob me. You know? So it was like. Inevitable. So when it happened, it was just like, all right, let's go. You kind of knew the world was gonna crash at that point. Yeah. It's like either it's either jail, kicked out of school, or both. Yeah. That Monday, I turned myself in, so they won't come on campus looking for me. I was living off campus, so Virginia State had no clue. Oh, so you, I, I, my my academic status, I was still good. Oh, that's smart. And so um, I turned myself in and everything. You know, I was just ready for everything. I was like, look, whatever y'all found in that room, that was mine. Damn. They locked me up. Damn. I got like I was facing like. I was turning myself in, so my girlfriend at the time, I gave her my money. I was like, yeah, come you, bail me out. You, you take precautions and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call you, come get me. 
So I was only sitting down for like a couple hours. But then um, they had me my papers and everything. It was like five years. And I was like, shit. But at the same time, like all before that. So you were I, facing, you were looking at five years. Yeah, I was looking at five years. Oh. Um, so I was, um, but all the time before that, I used to be like kind of paranoid because I used to look at stories of success, you know, people that came from beginners like mine. And they always had one common thing. And that was like struggle, whether it was being homeless, living in somebody's car. And like for me, that was the beginning of my struggle. So I kind of embraced it. I was like, man, you know, now it's like, yeah, now I know what I got to do if I want to, if I want to live a good life, if I want to, you know, if I want the best for myself, then I got to get through this. You know what I'm you saying? You were cognizant at that time. You you were telling yourself this at that time too. Yeah. I was like, and cause even like, cause after like the, after everything I had, I remember one time, like I had broke down real bad off some heartbreak type shit. Like with my mom and my mother was telling me like, I, I seen you go through way worse than this. I seen you facing five years, trying to graduate, taking 21 credits and be homeless. You know what I'm saying? And you didn't, you didn't budge. You know what I'm saying? You didn't crack a bit. And so I look back on it, it was like that the toughest time of my life, I was the strongest. So that's like that's that's kind of like who I who I am. And that was like my foundation. So when um Dude, I'm gonna be honest, man, like I'm happy that it that it wasn't worse than that because I had a homie in college doing the same thing and he got killed in his own house. Damn. Because they instead of the police raided him, it was just yeah, some, some regular dudes trying to rob just him. Just some dudes trying to rob him. He got shot right in his own just died before and I was just like Damn, that's what I'm saying. So that was a big wake up call after that. Yeah. So I had some money left over. Um, they didn't find all my money. Of and, course not. Come on. Yeah. And and, and then um, I just had my camera, and I had the bag I packed for that weekend. You know what I'm saying? So I was used to having everything. You know what I'm saying? Computers, laptops. So you didn't go to jail for five years? They took everything. Nah. So what ha- what had happened was um, I got out, I got a lawyer, and everything, and um. Virginia got a program, Virginia got a law, it's called the First Offenders Law. And if you haven't been in any trouble ever, then you qualify for it. I think the only time you don't qualify is like a murder or something. So with drugs, like the first offender, it's like a first offenders law. And I never been in trouble. Um, my transcript was outstanding. Uh I was already volunteering at a church down there before it happened. And um, so I, you know, I was I was looking like a good citizen. I was just looking like a kid making some money on the side. Yeah, you're just a kid trying to make some money. Yeah, makes money go through college and so um, working at Ruby Tuesdays or something like. Yeah, so and it's so funny because I had a, I had a, uh, I was I was so ready to like man I swallowed the whole pill like because I I got uncles like I got uncles I got an uncle I got two uncles they both came out of prison in 2010 one did 19 years one did 20 years you know what I'm saying. My, I got my whole family, like as far as the males, been in the street. So, I'm I'm talking to them about the situation. They're like, you know, they I I know what's I know what's up. I know what I gotta do. So at that point, I was just prepared, you know, for for whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm all right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get locked up. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get paroled off early. And, it's so weird. You're so chill about being locked up yeah, just because you've I'm seen a, it so much or something. I'm gonna get paroled off early and I'm um, I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna go back to school when I get when I when, you know when I get out. You know what I'm saying? Like. I knew what I was doing. I'm not about to tell nobody. I'm not, you know, like I knew what was up. I knew, I knew it was only two ways out of this, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you got to be a man about yours. So I didn't even have, like, I didn't even pay for a lawyer. I had, I had like enough money saved up to buy a lawyer. But at that point it was like, I'm homeless, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going to happen. I need this money. You know? I don't know what could happen. So I had a public defender and everything and I didn't know what was going to happen to me until I got to court. And... My public defendant was like, man, you got the perfect prosecutor. Like, it's this older black woman. If anybody's going, if anybody's going, you know, give you a pass, it's going to be her. Yeah. So I stood before the judge, and then they didn't even have a conversation yet. My lawyer asked the prosecutor to step in the little side room they have. They stepped in the side room, made a deal. Um, it was just a first offenders program. I didn't have to tell them nobody. I just had to pay, like, a shitload of money. Go to classes like I was a addict twice a week, and I was uh, <laughs> on probation for like a year. You're a weed addict, right? So then after um like after I graduate, they I they suspended my license too. So like for like six months after I graduated, every month I had to find somebody to like drive me to Petersburg just so I could pee and then go back home. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that's how that went, and um. But through all of that, like with just having my camera, I was like, man, this is 
this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You After know what I'm saying? After all that, you had your camera. This is sign. Right? It's like my struggle. This yeah. is what God is showing me. Like you know, um, like this is what this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So I could have made a couple more moves and you know or whatever. But I just quit like cold turkey, and I was like, "Man, I just focus on this camera." I was getting to that and point. It's like he's got busted. You were looking at jail, yeah, dealing. Yeah. I mean, most people just most people after that they just learn to move more careful. They don't really learn a lesson. Like you know what I'm saying? I ain't never know nobody that got locked up for selling drugs and then go right back to selling drugs. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, unless they did like some real time, but um. I took that and I was like, you know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you know. I don't got nothing else, nothing else to do. All I, got. I don't even have a laptop no more. They took my laptop. I yeah, can't even take my right? papers. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even take my papers. All I got is this camera. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I was taking pictures every day, just editing them on my girlfriend's laptop and doing my thing. So by the time I graduated, um, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. So I was just uh, that that first summer. I was just finding out about all the concerts. What were we going to school for, by the way? Um, journalism. Oh, whoa. Yeah, journalism. I did not expect that. Journalism. I didn't expect it either. I picked my major, um, like orientation. <laughs> and that was my first time being on campus. That was like my first time seeing it. Everything, like 20 minutes of being on campus and everything for the first time. I just, they gave me this big ass sheet and I just like mass calm. Dude, I did the same thing. Dude. <laughs> I went I went into school undecided and I actually wanted to study photography, yeah. but that wasn't a program. And so the right. next thing I had was music. Right. I was like, fuck, I guess I'll yeah. do music. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I'm here to fucking have a good time too. Yeah, I just want to ask I was like, journalism, I'm good with words. I, can, I know how to write. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I went to, uh, like in college, it was a breeze. Like I, my, my ninth yeah, college grade, was easy, right? My ninth and 10th grade, y'all went to Banneker. You, I don't know if you know about Banneker, but it's right on George Avenue. Um, it's a it's an IB school, International Baccalaureate school, so it's like the real deal. So, oh damn, I was learning like MLA and AP like ninth grade, like first first month of school. You know what I'm saying? So they were showing us how to structure papers. You know how to structure your thesis and so build your paper around your you thesis. It was nothing. Like, yeah, I'm like all those. My first two years of college was everything I learned in ninth and tenth grade. Yeah, isn't that so weird, dude? When you really think about it, we're getting finessed. Yeah, for, like that, for that's sure. the biggest finesse of, for of sure. Like, but I always tell people like college is the most expensive vacation <laughs> I ever took. That's a big because fact, I treated it like a vacation. You know what I'm saying? It was like the the freedom and everything, and how much you learn about yourself and how much you learn about life. That's where it kind of pays off. You that's know what true. I'm saying? Self discovery, the network, and everything. Like that's where that's where it really pays off. Because I'm not. I'm not doing anything I learned from college, as far as in the classroom. But you learn a lot of life lessons. Yeah, I'm 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 taking every I'm taking all my lessons from life and everything I learned from college. My networking, how to talk to people, how to approach people, everything, everything I learned outside of the classroom, I'm using every day from college. But the things I learn inside the classroom, it's just you just bring that up when you want to sound smart. <laughs> Do this to get this yeah. to get this on the paper, so you can use this paper to apply for that job. It's right. like it's it's very. This and that. It's it's very mm-hmm. just. It's not entrepreneurship at all. It's very yeah, it's just not. like do this to get that. It's very but cut it's, and dry. It's, you know, it's I, for some people like for me example like for me for example it's necessary. You know what I'm saying? If you need four years to figure something out, college is a perfect place because I definitely needed that time. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Debt is not a great spot. Though, but there was a. Shit. I mean, the debt is not. But, but I get what you're saying. My it's, my it's my a, thing was all all the um my whole thing was is like hey like once you got a degree they can't repo it so it's like. Of course you want to pay them so you can get a house hey, and all degree, that. You could always do better than working at McDonald's. So right, that's, that's nice. what I'm saying. That's nice they to know. <laughs> they can't repo. You might have some, you know, messed up credit and everything. God, for, God forbid your next drop and nothing tells you, ah, oh, shit. That, like degree, that degree in bad credit better than no degree in bad credit. So <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact, though. Yeah. So so you were doing full-time photography after you graduated college. Nah, so, um, my, so um, once I graduated, my mom lost her job. So, you know, I had a mortgage to pay. Damn. And um, I got an offer from New York Life to sell life insurance, like like within my first month of graduating. And I went for the interview. It was a three-step process, and they had me in the room. I'm 21 in a room with, like, 28-year-olds, 35-year-olds, you know what I'm saying? I made it all the way to the end. It was three rounds of, you know, interviews. And we started probably, like, 20 people. And I made it to the end. It was, like, four of us. And then um, 
I just went home and I was like, man, that's not what I want to do, bro. Like, I'm about to be stuck. Dude. Like, nine to five. Like, I'm not going to be able to take pictures. You sign up for something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, I ain't about to do this. So I went back to the tips. I, I didn't go back. I went back to the job. I was a bar back. I was like, y'all try to make me a bartender. I know all the drinks. They was like, nah. So I was like, all right, forget y'all. Um, <laughs> went on Craigslist or somewhere. And I was like, you know, just looking for serving jobs. Found one. No experience. The dude, Brian, the GM, he just took a chance on me. And he was like, yeah, you got a job. And I was like a a good-ass server. And so I was doing that. I was doing that and taking pictures. Um, I was working at a radio show, uh, taking pictures. And um, I I swear to God, I had like five jobs, but I don't remember. I mean, you just, it sounds like you're just hustling, doing yeah, whatever just, you had to do just, at that point. Hustling. Yeah. yeah so, so as soon as I got out of school, I was just, and I was just taking that free time. And then I eventually I got a second job. So my first job was on 11th in Pennsylvania. My second job was on 12th in Pennsylvania. They both were restaurants. The second one was a uh, Folk of the Child. So that's like a upscale steakhouse, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I was doing that six days a week, 10, 15, or 5 o'clock, go in the garage, take a nap, change my clothes, put on a bow tie and shit. Work from 6 o'clock to 11, 30, 12 o'clock, six days a week. That one day I had off, I was just taking pictures. That's all I wanted to do. So um, it's rough. I was just, you know, finessing my way into different concerts and events. And, yeah, I just started taking pictures of people. And then um, Broccoli's, Broccoli City came up. And one year they had Erica Badu and Willow Smith headlining. And um, I got a media pass with the radio station I was working for. And I took, like, the best pictures, I guess, because I woke up that next day and all these blogs and websites stole my pictures. Damn. And they didn't give me no credit. And so, for, like, just for that day, just for that day, I was mad. I was like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't get my credit. I was telling people, like, tag me under the pictures or whatever. That's all you can. And then that next day, I was like, bro, you know, like, that's what you sign up for when you're an artist. You know, a lot of times you're not going to get your flowers until it's too late. You know, so I just kind of like swallowed the pill. I was like, man, I'm not doing it for recognition. I'm doing it because it's who I love and the work going to speak for itself. You know what I'm saying? Because like one of my favorite photographers always uh, is has been Vivian Meyer. And I don't know if you know about her story, but she was a nanny that uh, she was a nanny and nobody knew she was a photographer. No, nobody. Well, she was a, she was a nanny. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, she was a she was a nanny, but people like only like her kids and like sometimes the parents knew like she was in photography. She never she never got any of her film developed. She just took pictures, you know what I'm saying? And this dude found it and now she's recognized as one of the best photographers in American history, you know what I'm saying? I saw that documentary, I never watched it, but I kinda and read over her story it, and I was like, what? You're telling me she died and then all it. this film lived on past her? I'm like, that is the most sad she thing took I've ever heard. She took the best like, pictures ever. She took the best pictures ever, bro. Like they, she, they say she changed street she, photography. Yeah, she changed street photography. She made me get into it. So, like, just just knowing that, I, I, I wasn't tripping. So, like, um... She was doing it for some good reasons. She just did it for herself at that point. Yeah, she was doing it for sure. herself. Yeah, that's big inspiration. So, I, de- so um, I remember my man, like, the next day on Twitter, like, two days later on Twitter... My man, he had DM me, and it was like the Eat logo. He was like, you know, just you need a watermark, bro. Just put this on your pictures. And I was like, thank you. You know, I'm trying to pay him for it. You know, I'm just like. Your buddy just sent you the logo? Huh? He just sent you like that. Yeah, he was. I'm like amazed, you know what I'm saying? He's like, bro, you don't owe me nothing. I made this on my phone. It took me two minutes, you know what I'm saying? I got the app. Like, he made it on and everything. It's like a free app. <laughs> <laughs> so my my logo was made off a of free iPhone app, and um, that's when uh, I started putting it on the pictures. And then at this point, I'm taking stickers and putting them everywhere. So I always like once I once he made that logo for me, I got some stickers made. And since I was in like street photography, I was like when I go out, uh. I'm, uh, I always had like two packs of stickers, and I'm not gonna come home till I put them all everywhere. So I used to put them all around DC and stuff, and um. If you was like out and about and you was like, you know, in tune with social media as well, eventually you'll come across one of my pictures because I was still doing the same thing. I was taking, you know, like the popular people in the city or people that everybody knew and I was taking that picture. But this time I was putting my my, my watermark, my watermark yeah. on it. So it was like 
it was subconsciously like people was learning about it, like seeing it subconsciously, and you know what I'm saying. So by the time, so by the time I made T-shirts, they was like, oh, you know what I'm saying. It was like um, I don't I I forget who it was or what it was called, but it was. I remember like three summers ago, like everywhere you went, you would see these posters of this uh, this dude, this black dude. He had like a bush with the hat on and little, and he had on glasses. It was like that, you know what I'm saying? And I can only imagine if I was to ever meet the person that did that, like, and they were selling shirts, I was like, bro, that's you, man. Let me get a shirt, man, right now. Like, I'll be seeing your shit everywhere, you know what I'm saying? That's how I was doing. Like, it's e stickers everywhere. And you see it on the internet on everybody's pictures, but you know, you don't know who it is, you know what I'm saying? So I kinda get curious. Yeah, I was doing that for the longest and then uh, just putting on pictures and then my friends was like, Man, you need to make a t shirt, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's random for a photographer though. Like for a photographer to just start making clothes. Yeah, I was taking pictures for everybody else's clothing line. But I can see how you're like, yo, this is a hustle. I'll try it, why not? Yeah, no, nah, I was at first for the for the longest, for probably like two months, they was damn near begging me, man. He was like, man, you need to make some T-shirts. And they knew my situation at home. I'm taking care of my family and everything. So they like, I feel like they wanted to support me. So they like, man, make some T-shirts. And I'm just like, bro, that's not me. I'm, I don't, I'm not a designer. I don't care about that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm working two jobs. And anytime I got free, I'm just trying to take pictures. That was like my sanity at the moment, at the time. So um, like I, I was like, nah, whatever. So Eventually, I hit them with the like, all right, figure out how we can get them made. You know, we can start a business and we could be partners. You know what I'm saying? But then they started BSing. Dude, it's so hard to depend on other people. Yeah, they, they started BSing, but at, for a moment, I was like kind of happy because it's like now I can come around, y'all don't got to ask me about these shirts because you ain't do your job. So, ah. and they ain't do their job, they're not going to talk about it. So, um, so, but, so you make the shirts, you drop them. No, nah, I ain't even make the shirts yet. So, I'm, uh, like at this point, like I'm, I'm a praying man. I, I remember going on praying every day, like before my shift. Sometimes in the middle of my shift, after my shift, on on my way to my next job, like man, you know, God, I just want to be a photographer. I got a degree. Like I know I'm not supposed to be doing this. You know, I'm on my feet all day, busting my ass for tips. You know what I'm saying? Just make me a photographer. This is what I want to do, so I could be able to support myself. I just wanted to be able to support myself all of just photography. But you know what I'm saying. Eventually, I just got tired. You know what I'm it's saying. It's hard. Trust me, I do it. It's gonna be a person. It's gonna be a time. It's gonna be a time. I feel like in, in people's life when they really grinding, when you gonna when you gonna be tired, and it's hard for me to explain it. You know what I'm saying. Like I used to, like I remember. I remember telling. I remember like trying to tell somebody like, like if somebody was asking me what's wrong or trying to pick my brain. I remember telling them like. I'm tired, and to the point where, like, if I repeat it more than twice, I start tearing up. You know what I'm saying? But that's gonna it's gonna come a point in everybody ground when they just gonna be tired. You're gonna be exhausted, man. Mentally and it's not and like physically. and it's not like I need a vacation or um, I could really use some some money right now or I need to take a nap. It's like, man, I I'm, I'm doing everything, man. I'm exhausted. Not going your way. I'm exhausted, yeah. and so you just give it to God. You know what I'm saying? And my prayer changed from the whole photography thing to like, well, whatever you want me to do. I know you don't want me serving tables, but whatever you want me to do, like I'm with it. And so I just had like an epiphany one day. I went to my mother. I was like, can you figure out how I can get my logo on some T-shirts? And she was like, yeah. So she found me a dude. I paid way too much for the shirts. Always. I started 30. I mean, I started off with um, 30 shirts. So all 30 in like two days. So my friends, they wasn't, you know, they wasn't BS and they were serious about supporting me. That's got to feel good. Yeah. So they, so I'm thinking, you know, like, all right, that's that. Um, but then um, like maybe like two weeks go by when they all get a chance to wear their shirt and post it on social media. And they're like coming to me like, man, everybody asking about my shirt or people starting to hit me on Instagram. Like, man, is that you with the shirts? I seen such and such with the mm -hmm. shirt. Is there a way I could get one? And so at first I was just going to keep it exclusive, you know, for me and my friends. So we could just be them rare people in the clothes that nobody knows how to buy. That feels nice. Yeah, that's like a DC thing too. We love being exclusive. And then I was like, shit, but I need some money and maybe that's my sign. So got 30 more shirts and I just kept getting shirts and shirts and shirts. And Oh yeah, if someone's trying to throw their money at you, all right, I'll just, take it. I was just supplying and demand and it was getting to the point where it was like, um... I was like at my second job when everybody would usually be getting off of work and I like take a break or at the end of the shift, I'd be like, man, I lost money coming, coming to work. You know Damn. what I'm saying? 
Cause my phone was deep. You gotta quit it. Yeah, so I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start saving money. So I was like, I'm gonna save, you know, three months of all my bills, and it's whatever. So I remember my my first job during the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like they had tried to put me outside on the patio serving tables, and it was a hundred degrees that day. Fuck. It was a hundred degrees already at eleven o'clock. Fuck. So I'm like, I'm I'm in the back of the restaurant on my phone. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'm not about to get any tables. Fuck this. Like, why, why the fuck? Why, why didn't you even send me? Why, why, why am I still here? You should send me home. You know what I'm saying? And so um, my manager come back there all pissed off. And he like, man, go home. And me and him had a good enough relationship. Like, I, I used to be like the trainer there. Like, so we had new people. I used to train them on how to be service. Like, that was my guy. You know what I'm saying? We used to bump heads sometimes. But that was my guy. But he came back there like with an attitude. Like, man, you know, just go home. And... I knew he didn't mean you were fired, but I took that as, like, you fired. So I was like, bet, you're not going to see me no more. And then, like, probably, like, a month after that, I took off to, like, for my second job to go up New York. And on a Monday and on Sunday, he was like, yeah, that was a mistake. You're not supposed to have a day off. We need you to come in. And then they You're in New some, York. You can't come back. Yeah, and they was on some shit like I was going to be terminated. So I'm like, bro, I'm not coming. So I was like, I, I guess I'm fired now. So... You know, I think it's really interesting to point out. I the jobs. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's really interesting to point out that that beginning of the shirt stuff, you were doing a lot of genius branding stuff. Like you were shooting the most important people mm-hmm. and you were slapping your stickers everywhere. So like the public eye is already like, what the hell is this? And yeah. all of a sudden you come around with a shirt. It's like, boom. It's like, okay, what's up? Right. And, and so I'm like, I already got three months. Like, I'm a, like I told you, I'm a hustler at heart. So if, I, if, I'm, if I'm already ahead three months and I can't figure out the rest of the nine months, and that means I need to be. That means I need to be working two jobs in a restaurant. I deserve to be there. You know what I'm saying? That was my whole output. Like, if it's for me, I'm gonna prosper. So, I I go from there, and it's like now it's like you know I'm not checking in with nobody. So my day to day was consisted of some patches, a heat press, and then packing everything in my trunk and going around the different neighborhoods and seeing who won what. Um, that was like my thing. It was hand in hand. Like I always tell people these days, like people always ask me about the internet. And I'm like, bro, that's about word of mouth. Like the internet break, I'm gonna be all right because I can go right back to loading that trunk up and selling out in that's, a day. That's like yeah, it's and I was just doing it different. A lot of people respect my grind. I was pulling up in the trenches, like places nobody would go, especially making no money. You know what I'm saying? With ice cream trucks got burglar bar doors. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just pulling up and. I'm not charging nobody for a price. I'm showing love because I'm like in their hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and they just like buy, a, and they buying like so much. It's like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just pulling up and selling out all around the city. Like, that's my day to day. What you need? Where you at? I'm about to come meet you. You know what I'm saying? And I was doing it like that. That's and it was And that was important for me because like I was, the way I was branding myself with just the photography, eat is, you know, elevate all the time. If you don't eat, you die in the street. So I feel like that was an important message, you know, for my people, you know. That's what it was about, the message. So I remember, like, when it first started popping off and, like, that summer, it was, like, one summer I went, I got, like, I got, like, 20,000 20, followers. Like, Damn. that first summer, like, summer 2016. Damn. So, of course, it was, like, the people from the area that was living in other places, like, man, how do I get it? I'm, you know, I'm in the military or whatever, but I'm from back home. I'm trying to represent and for the longest, I was like, man, you got well, you got to get somebody to come see me at a pop up shop, because it meant something for me to shake everybody's hand that had my t shirt or give everybody a hug that had my t shirt. I used to have these brown paper bags, and I used to write, "If you don't eat, you die in the street," on every one for everybody that you know that bought something from me. So it was like intimate, it was personal, and it was to the point like it was like a like a conglomerate almost. If you walking down the street, you got an e shirt on. And you see, some, and you see a total stranger with an e-shirt on. That's really your friend. And those people going nine times, ten times out of ten, they're gonna speak to each other now because they both know me. They both got the shirt the same way. They both supporting the same movement. So you know, their initiatives align nine times out of ten. So that's what it was about for me, just being able to look people in their eyes, say elevate all the time. If you don't eat you down the street, so they can know what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I respect that hustle so hard that you were literally driving with people's hoods and just yeah, I was selling stuff. Because I, I feel like the thing that I see so many times that people start in clothing brands these days is they create it. They want the internet. They think, they think the internet's going to make yeah, them sales. Like they cre- everybody going to buy this shit. Nah. 
Like you were out there, feet on the ground, like, yo, this is some shit. What's up? Half, you know, lower price because yeah. you're out here. Like, I, that's I, I, real salesman shit. And I was just off working off a vinyl cutter, you know what I'm saying? A vinyl cutter and some heat passes. So I remember early on, like, I used to be like, man, you know, I used to do customs for people. Like, if you was a big dog in the hood or whatever, Hell like, yeah. I'd give you, like, a super exclusive ET or something like that. And, you know, people just follow suit. People, like, wanted to be a part of it. And it got to the point where it was like, People didn't, so, there's so many people in the hood that's like not really that deep in social media. Mm -hmm. So it was so many hoods thinking that like they was like the official eat hood. Like they the only people where I can eat. Everyone felt real special. So like, I'm from Edgewood. So like my, my hood, Edgewood, they definitely, they was like, man, yeah, this, this Edgewood, eat, man, this some Edgewood shit. So everybody, I'm talking about every day coming outside with eat shirts. They felt proud. I'm talking like about they were like, this 50 is 50 people in the complex, 30 of them got on eat shirts. It's like people used to ride past that, like ride past my hood and record everybody outside and send me a video. Like, did you know all these people around here wearing your shit? So, but then it was like my 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 hood, like when my mom lived in Southeast, and they used to, they to this day they call that it's Thirty Fourth and Crawford, but now they call it Thirty Fourth and Eat, and they the same way. Like every day, I had people coming to my porch, like ten a.m. to like ten p.m. Like, yeah, you got what what size you got? Like, let me get a shirt real quick. You know what I'm saying? So I, like, it was times where I couldn't even make it off my block. If I had some new gear, I couldn't even make it off my block. Damn. Because everybody from my neighborhood, they'd see, like, me post, like, the new, like a new shirt on Instagram, and they'd come straight to my door and start knocking. <laughs> and it got to the point where, like, I'm still making the shirts. And it's like, they knocking five minutes later, somebody else need a shirt, somebody else need a shirt. Man, I don't got no more of these, or this style no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm sold out. Because they didn't call their cousins and uncles and everybody just pulled up. You know what I'm saying? I had my mother's house looking like a goddamn McDonald's. Dude, and, um, that's beautiful, though. Like, was, that's how you want to see yeah, it right I was there. Just, I was just going crazy, and I was yeah. doing the same thing around, around the, like, the whole D.C., just going everywhere, selling shirts, and people just, like, respecting it. And that's what they wanted. I feel like they wanted it so bad because that's where we come from. I don't know any other place that has as many designers as us growing up. You didn't have to wear anything but DC stuff if you if you didn't want to. We had uh, the hobos, the the madness, uh, all days. Um, we are one. You know what I'm saying? Was Sobiato in there? Sobiato. I couldn't afford Sobiato till yeah, I got like, to high school. I got a job. Shit. My mother wasn't paying that. <laughs> My mother wasn't paying that for no clothes. But um, like we we had all those brands. You know what I'm saying? And they kind of faded away on us. And so, like, what people saying, eat, it was like that resurgence. They was like, man, you know, we got back like down, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, I had a good network of people from playing sports, being in, in, the, in the parties, and just, you know, being out. You can so, move that whole thing, too, if you want. You can oh, pull it over and shit. And just being out and shit. So it was like, I just reached out to those people, and those people was willing to, you know, buy the shirts, and they warm, and they posting them, and, you know, people just... Caught on, but then it got to the point where it was like, um, like I'm making all this money, you know what I'm saying? But like I, I wanted to make like a further impact, like the message and all that good, you know what I'm saying? But I want to get back to my people. Like um, all this money is coming from my people, you know what I'm saying? Not just the hood, because I used to, like I said, nobody, nobody in the hood ever paid forty dollars for a shirt. Um, and some and and sometimes I used to just give them away if it, if it was a kid, you know what I'm saying. I could tell, you know, his his, his people don't take care of him, you know what I'm saying. But he just want to be like everybody else. I he wants to look good, yeah. Come holler at me, you know. This other day I give him a shirt and a cup or something like that. So it was always like that, and and so um I just I just was like man I gotta give back. So I just started doing my thing in the community, just like doing whatever you know, feeding people. We're prom, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Just knowing anything, you know what I'm saying? Anything people need help with. I was just providing the privileges, you know what I'm saying? It's cool to see how much your community and giving back means to you. And, and yeah. I, I mean, I was making so much money, I, I was like, <laughs> I better give some of this shit back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The way I was raised. When you were, when you were, you know, during that whole time when things are going crazy like that and if things are really popping, like you're literally selling fresh off the press, like... Were you thinking, like, I always want to be a street brand, or were you thinking I want to kind of take this no, commercial? I was, I was um, when I first started off, I was still a photographer just trying to sell some t-shirts. 
And I didn't take the, I didn't, I didn't even like embrace the designer role or any of that until like it got to the point like where it's like, all right, I don't know nothing about clothes. I'm just taking these patches and heat pressing them on shirts. You know what I'm saying? To me, I knew it could it could be at a better quality. I knew I could, it could be better, but at the same time, I was like, I'm gonna milk it. You know what I'm saying? People, that's what people like. That's what people cool with. You know, supply and demand. I'm gonna milk it for what it's worth. But in the same token, it got to the point where it was like, um, these these shirts are fucking ugly. I want I want my shit to be stitched in. I need to have my name in the tags. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stuff I'm already telling my stuff er, myself early on. But then the critics start saying the same thing. So it was like, mm. nah, I'd be damned if y'all gonna just like try to shit on me. I'm gonna take this shit serious. So I started doing my research. I started learning about clothes, trying to find different manufacturers that could make, you know, my vision come to life. And yeah, so it was like a catch up thing. And I remember uh, Uncle Ed from Madness. That's like the most successful streetwear brand in DC. Like after that, his name after that, so much. after that first, after that first, uh, I think it was like two years. He was like, man, what you done done in two years? People don't even do it in five years. People really do this like ten years. You know what I'm saying? So I was catching up to that. I'm coming from just knowing everything about a, a camera to now it's like. To somebody that don't know where I come from and don't know me, they like, man, I'm not buying this. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? But the people that know me, they like, man, he just started. This is just the beginning. But I like where it's going. That's why I'm supporting it. But to somebody else, they're like, man, you pay $40 for that shirt, man. That joint heat press. You know what I'm saying? You paying $40 for a heat press shirt. You know what I'm saying? And people on Twitter and everything. So he was like, man, I got to step my game up. They don't know what it means, man. Because like everything that they yeah. were saying, it was like, I had the same, you know, sentiments. You know what I'm saying? I was my biggest critic too. So it was like, I had to catch up to that. So, like, that was like early on. That was like the big, the big challenge or or the big, or the big thing. Because at the same time, it's like if you go back on my Instagram, you go way back, or even in my highlights. I even got it in my highlights on my Instagram. Like, I was all, I was taking all the pictures. You know what I'm saying for for my for the brand, mm -hmm. and that was a way to expose like to expose my photography. I mean, people that's perfect. My, yeah, people was coming to my page for the eat. But I was doing photo shoots with eat, you know what I'm saying? So they were still seeing my photography too. So it was like killing two birds with one stone. You do the marketing and you're making it all shit. Yeah. But after that summer, that's where everybody was just pressing me out. Like, man, get a website, get a website. And I didn't even want to get one because I'm like, man, it, it was still personal. It was intimate. So it was like. You weren't even worried about the website, online. Yeah. You, weren't, you weren't even worried about like e-commerce and all that shit. Going, you were making I, money, you were selling. And, like. I, and I always tell people now, believe me, because they see like the numbers now and what we doing now. I'm like, bro, the brand was way bigger the first year than it was now. It was crazy. It was way bigger. Like, because that word of mouth is nothing like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, my phone was blowing up all day and night. Like, when people can't get to something, it just that exclusiveness yeah, of it. They want it. They know you're right there, people, but they when can't it's, get when it. It's just like a struggle, you know what I'm saying? But when they know it's like, yeah, he sells stuff in Shoe City. They they gonna chill. Like, I'm I go by whenever I pass uh, Shoe City, I, yeah. I stop in. I'm gonna make sure. But at first, it was like, man, where you at right now? You know what I'm saying? Like they were sending people to. I don't know when the next time I see you. Let me get every color. Damn. Like straight up. So that's what that's what it it's like. It meant of. so much to people when it was happening. Like it was like the it was something that was modern, like a brand that could really get behind because yeah. you're from here and everything. It was just and it was like just a message, man. If you don't eat, you die in the street. That's some real and it shit. Was like man, and that's like that's yeah. like that's like the real DC culture. You know what I'm saying? And then so many people like to say we crabs in the bucket and all that. I can't speak none of those words because like it came like early on. Like my, I built my brand solely off DC. I wasn't getting to Maryland yet, Virginia yet, none of that. I built my brand solely off DC support, and it was because people had love for me, love for what I did, and they loved the city. That's why it came up. Dude, one hundred percent. You could not be from DC, and you could just go somewhere in DC, and you will see the rainbow letters of yeah. upside down somewhere, and you'll be like, "Why do I keep seeing that shit yeah. everywhere? Why is it everywhere? You see these the jumpsuits. Like I see some crazy. But that's how pieces, we. But that's man. just like a, to go to show how we feel about the culture. It's so like the same way how they felt about E, that's the same way they felt about Go Go. So that's that's why people are always gonna promote it and and try to put it in your face. And it was to the point where it's like everybody was in and when when we first started, everybody was an ambassador for E. You know what I'm saying? Anybody with an E shirt, if they had some people from out of town, or if they knew people out of town, they like, man, you don't know about this yet though. Like you need to get hip to this. People coming to the city, I like 
Cause I was hand to hand, so yeah. the people coming to me like, Personal. man, you know, I'm from I'm from this place, I'm from that place. I'm just in the city for a while. My friend told me about it. You know, what I'm saying I just had to, you know, check in. It was just like crazy. I mean, <laughs> but your 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 company is easily the biggest clothing company coming out of DC. That's from DC. I mean, has has that ever hit you? Like, do you think about that at all? Like that yeah. sort of pressure and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I mean, it's not pressure because like that's like cool, but I don't. That's really, good pressure, but I don't really embrace that. And kind of ask you like your last question, like I don't really limit to myself. I don't really limit myself to anything. You know what I'm saying? It's a brand. It's a business. It's a company. But like, if people want to recognize it for clothing, that's cool. But my efforts are, my efforts are for people to be like, man, eat is just eat, man. Like they do stuff in the community. Homeboy DJ, he be rapping. He do the clothes. They got the nonprofit. They out here, you know what I'm saying? Eat is just eat. And once I, you know, get into my other entrepreneur, you know, endeavors, that's when it's going to really get to that point. People going to see my vision. Like, slowly but surely, people seeing my vision, like, how I don't limit myself to anything. I want airlines, you know what I'm saying? Elevate all the time, airlines. I want my own gas stations. I want cafes. I want libraries. I want my own charter school. It's like um, E is just a brand. It's what you're doing right now. Brand, it's not it's not the beginning, the end for you. It's it's it's, it's not, just what you're doing right now and it's working. Yeah, like and people always like say Nike. I'm like, man, where where I'm going, it's something like you never you never seen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'ma be Nike, I'ma be Amazon, I'ma be It's just hard to explain. Like I'm not I'm not gonna limit this to anything, but I'm gonna show I'm I, like everything I do with everything I do and everything I say. I always think about the kids, you know what I'm saying? Because they listening. It's a future. I'm going to show kids, like, man, don't let nobody put you in no box. Like, I'm going to be DC history. I'm going to be black history, not just for making a clothing line. Yeah, so the clothing line got, you know, got the exposure, but yeah, this is the beginning. It's just a stepping stone. But you don't ever want to just be Malik, the yeah, guy design, who, who yeah, designs for Eat, design, like the guy who owns Eat. I like, want to be Malik, entrepreneur, artist, artist, artist slash entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that, that's a way better way to approach the business in general, man. Like, yeah, I, like, yeah the clothes and all that, that's cool. Like, But it's really just the beginning, man. Like, <laughs> I'm talking about festivals, everything. Like, I want to I wanna get into everything. You I know, know but dude, it's, it's, it's crazy because you literally are that brand out of D.C. Like, I'm trying to be, man. That's cool as shit, man. I'm that's to cool be, as shit. Man, I, and I feel like one of the best things like about who I am is like, I don't, I don't really like, I don't nothing get to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, people be more excited about shit I be doing than me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how you just was like, eh, that's cool. Like, to me, I'm just like, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. It's just, but, it's just a little bit. But like, no, none of it. Like, I'm not saying I don't hear it. Like, I appreciate it, no bullshit. But it's like, the way, I don't know, I feel like the way God set me up, it was just perfect because if you was to take that same energy and say something negative, I had the same response, like, all right, you know what I'm saying? And that's like, I feel like that's just a blessing, you know what I'm saying? So don't nothing get to my head, like the good or the bad. Mm -hmm. Like people try to, people, you know, try to run my resume off down to me, you know, every time. And I'm just like, you know, that's cool, you know, but it's, it's, it's more to be done. Like, I feel like I won't be that type of person. Like, you won't hear me bragging until I open up that school. I'm, I ain't going to hold you. Like, I'm going to be bragging. Oh, damn, you open up a school? Yeah, when I open up my school, I don't know like when. Like a private school or a public school? I'm going to open up a charter school. That's my number one goal. What does open that mean? What's a charter school mean? I really don't know. It's basically just more flexibility, less rules, okay. funding. But I want to open a uh, leadership academy just providing, a pro providing that same privilege damn, that man. we provide with the nonprofit, you know what I'm saying? So I, don't, I just don't let anybody limit me, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, I always grew up saying, man, if somebody did it, that means I could be better, you know? So anything I see, I always say, how, how, I always look at it like, how can I make it better? How can I, how can I make it make sense for me? You know what I'm saying? You, do, do you have a, a music video coming out? Yeah, I got a music video. Those are some it's funny, I talking. love those photos. Yeah, the, yeah. the view from between her legs. I was like, yeah, this is like do, a classic I, photo. That's what I'm saying. I do photo. everything, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot of people want. Did you take that photo? Nah, somebody else took it. 100 oh. M's, took a shot at the 100 M's. But it's a lot of people. Like, I remember, like, I remember one time I was in, like, the strip club. I was in the stadium. And this dude was, like, 
uh, he came up to me and he was like, man, you know, you are homage. I was like, yeah. He was like, but you in the strip club. I was like, yeah. He was like, but don't you be like working with kids and everything? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I just like booty too. Yeah, I, I do that, but like that's what I'm saying. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not putting myself in front of kids and saying, look, you need to be like me. I'm showing them that you could do, like you could do whatever you want. You're not breaking the law. You could do whatever you want. You could be whoever you you want to be. You could still give back, and you could still, you know, you could be who you are. You don't got the person that gives back doesn't have to be this old super super perfect polished person mm-hmm. because those are the people that let you down as soon as they get caught up in some shit and just show people that they human and that's when everybody want to be you know against them that's why like from the gate i was like i'm not i'm not chilling out for nothing that's why i'm still just as transparent on instagram or social media i i let all like how i'm feeling or whatever um i still curse and all of that because i feel like that's a responsibility that's that's up to people you know to the, that's that's up to the kids' parents, and You're real, even when I it. do get in front of parents, I mean in front of kids, I don't use that type of language, or I don't, I don't, you know, promote any of those type of things, and I let them know, like, like all my kids that students that follow me on Instagram, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm a grown, I'm a grown man, you know, I've 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 done I've done well for myself, I run my own business, I'm I, that's why I get this 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 type of freedom, you know what I'm saying. You know, that I don't tell them what to do or anything, but they understand. Like, all right, just because he doing it, don't make it, don't make it mean that doesn't mean I have to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's really real too to just be like, yo, this is me. I still go to strip club. I still do that stuff. Because if you're gonna sit there and try right. to act perfect, and try to be this beacon of just. I don't want me, nobody kids, to get like, me confused. I don't then, want nobody to get me confused because yeah. then I don't want you to. I don't want that person to actually see me in the strip club and be like. <sighs> Man, what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> let me shock let me, and then post it on Instagram or yeah, something. That's me, like, all homage. He's not a good example. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I like I don't break the law. No what more. is all homage, by the way? So um <laughs> homage always, is just like paying respect. And there was this dude named PJ. He used to uh, always come around like on campus and be like, anybody got some homage, you know, pay homage, you know, so I'm trying to pay homage. But he used to be talking about like Capone's little cigars. <laughs> and so he used to uh, he used to like always buy like a big ass pack and hand them out. Yeah. <laughs> he used to always buy a big ass pack and hand them out. You know what I'm saying? He used to be like, you know, just tell, you know, a little homage. I'm just paying homage, man. I'm paying homage that everybody can get one. And he would just and give then, them out? But yeah, he'd just give them out. And then days where he'd just come on campus and he ain't had none, he'd be like, man, somebody, you know, pay some homage. You know what I'm saying? That was like uh, the word. That was like the DC word, homage. So when I started um, doing my photography and branding myself, like, it was always eat, but then it was like it couldn't. I didn't want to be eat photography, so it was all homage photography. And I always saw, you know, photography, you know, capturing freezing time for people and everything like that. It was like a way of paying respect for them. You know, you take a picture of somebody, they could live forever. So that's where I got all homage from. Damn, I was at PJ. <laughs> Shout out to uh, some slight food truck. He, yeah. he he got his own food truck now. Good food too. Oh, but he he. He gave me my name. Well, he helped me come up with my name. That's I was always wondering except when I was looking at my Instagram, like, why is it all homage? I don't I don't and even get it. like outside of my photography, that's all I do. I just pay respect. I'm a respectful dude. I pay respect to everybody. Um, like I like I take care of my people, I take care of my community. Mm-hmm. I'm just big on respect. Everything I do is with respect. That's good, man. Dude, <laughs> you've got a good head on your shoulders, man. man shout out to you mind me asking how old you are? <laughs> 26. You're only 26? Yeah, 26. God, you make me feel like a failure. The fuck? Nah, you good. Nah, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet, though. Whoa, yeah. I, I thought you were like 30 or something. I'm not going to lie. Nah, 26. You seem a lot older than you, than you are. That's it, dope. It's been it's been going by fast, man. I yeah. started, I made my first shirts when I was 23. Or, nah, 22, turning 23. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, I feel like this last four years has been, flew by. I feel like an old man now. Dang. I used to start off that business like, aware on it. So I used to, I used to, uh, people used to ask me how old I was. I used to be like 23. They used to be like, dang. Now it's like 26. They'd be like, oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah, it's not as, it's not as like <laughs> yeah. shocking anyway. Like, all right, fucking yeah, nice. right. <laughs> kind of getting old, man. I'm glad you're doing something. Yeah, uh, that's what it's like. So, I mean, people that's in, like, people that's, uh, that's been doing the same thing as me or, you know, in the same fields that, that I'm in, they could, they respect it a whole lot. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Well, me being the youngest I am, so. Yeah, I went to your uh, enemies uh, collab like a yeah. year. I was almost two years ago now, man. I remember that. Yeah, that was yeah, that was definitely uh, yeah, almost two years, going on two years. But shout out to my man Doyle. Yeah, Doyle's been on the show. 
Yeah, that's my man. Yeah, he, he's a wicked cool dude. Yeah, for sure. No, you don't get enough credit in the city, man. But he a legend. He's 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 a cool. I would never want to get in his bad side. Real talk. He a legend, man. Doyle's a legend. He's he got the best a, laugh I've ever heard he in my get life. Enough credit. That is my favorite thing about Doyle. Yeah, contagious too, man. It is, <laughs> man. Dude, I had him on show. We, we, we were drinking a little bit, man. We were we were cracking <laughs> up, man. That was hilarious. <laughs> that, that's it. Shout out you, Doyle. Dude, I fucking I love that guy, man. Yeah, yeah that's my man. <laughs> that's cool. But uh, Doyle, you've been real supportive, like since the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like he always been like supportive and just genuine. Like, man, that's that's good what you're doing. And I'm an old ass man. <laughs> he always calling himself, oh, I'm an old ass man. You're a little bit younger than me, bro, but I love what you're doing, man. But yeah, it's like, man, I respect him so much, like, you know what I'm saying? Off just being who he is and like how he just embraced me and been helping me out, you know? Like a lot of people won't do that. A lot of people haven't done that. But since day one, like, though you made it clear, like, bro, this, we, we got, we, we fighting for the same cause, you know what I'm saying? You know, we could link up. We could be a team. Two heads better than one. Whatever you need, I got you. If I ever need anything, just return the favor. Like, it was never a competition thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's just been like a... I, I categorize it as just like a sucker-free relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's just been real transparent. Whole hundred. And that's why I did the collab. You know what I'm saying? Because people ask me to do collabs all the time. I imagine that. Your but I just point. be like, nah... <laughs> I mean, you can collab with New Balance When you hit that level You're kind of like I don't want to collab with you, bro Like, what you Yeah, doing? a lot of people be coming out the world A lot of people just want to use you Type shit So Maybe people were like Haven't even dropped yet They're like Yeah, this is my clothing line You know, I'm trying to do a collab I'm like, bro You got to make some noise for yourself I ain't I didn't I didn't have nobody number from New Balance I didn't knock on their door I didn't send them no email I was out here making noise And they found out They found me and then so you that's the why I tell people like, man, if you if you nice, if you think you know we go together so well, make some noise for yourself so it can make sense for me. Because the last thing I'm gonna do is uh pull your boots up for you. You know what I'm saying? I got I got family I could be doing that shit for. So and let you know, like you got to put in that work. And I always tell people like, like I said, like I got family I got to take care of. You know, it's, I I get them a handout before it's total strangers. So I always tell people like. Man, if you want to work with me and you're not on my level, then the best way to do it is like if we, if you, let's say you're building a shelf, you know what I'm saying? Build that motherfucker. Build it up. And once you're done building it and it's leaning a little bit, or you like, but it don't look, it don't look, it don't look cool enough to sell me, or you need to paint it, or you need to, that's when you bring it to me. Mm -hmm. And that's when we make it. A shelf. You're not you know gonna build that shelf for him, right? If somebody on my level, we could build that shelf all together. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If it's equally beneficial, but if I if nobody's ever heard of you, you doing a collab with me, and now eighty thousand people about to know who you are. No, nah, I don't. Because your but, name's on it too. That's a yeah, big that's deal. That's what I'm saying. It, it, and my name is on it too. So it's like I, it don't work like that. So, but when you tell them the thing about it, when you tell them to build that shelf, they get they get discouraged, and they don't never build that shelf. So it's like you wasn't serious. You wanted the handout. Is that is that something? This kind of came to my mind. Is that something you're you're worried about? And I'll explain. Like, are you worried about being too available to be DC? Because it seems like you're really hitting some like heights with your with your company, with your brand, and what you're doing. Like, you're very successful. Like, are you worried about like being too reachable to people? Like, still being part of the streets and stuff like that? Is that um, is that a concern? Like, nah, I still get out. I still do my thing. Like, um, uh, other people like be concerned about it. Yeah. But um to me like like I said, I'm a real humble dude. Like I don't know anybody that that if they wear my shoes when the like went crazy by now. Mm -hmm. As far as like being flashy, like I don't drive, I don't I don't own jewelry. Uh like, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm still an average Joe, so when people see me on the streets, they like, man. Bro, you know, you a real humble dude. Like, I like you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's probably been times where dudes was like, you know, had full intentions on hating me, but once they pulled up to the event and see how I was moving, they was like, man, it's it's real it's real hard to hate on somebody like me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I just, like, I'm from here, so I just got that sucker-free mentality. Like, I understand, like, what can happen and all that, but you can't worry about those things coming from, yeah. coming from here and being raised how I was raised. Cause if that was the case, I'd never come out the house. If I 
Yeah. You know, if I just if I if I was just trying to uh, be smart or whatever. I don't but, know um, if it's being smart, but I just it's yeah, like yeah. it's like when you hit a level of like fame or, or yeah, but but definitely everywhere I go, and sometimes it helps. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere I go, because like I be I be battling with anxiety and depression a lot. So sometimes like um, I be out in public, just you know going through it. But somebody come up to me and say, "Man, I like what you're doing" or whatever shit like that. And it's it's hard to have a bad day when you get like three, three or four people come up to you. You know, just because they like what you do. You know what I'm saying? You almost don't want to let them down. But in the same token, I feel like that's kind of like what kind of, kind of like led to me having anxiety and depression. When I was an average Joe and feeling this way, it made sense. But it's like when everybody loves you, you know what I'm saying? And you're doing well for yourself. It's like, why do I feel like this? But that's just how we was raised. How I was raised coming from where I'm from being poor, not just me, but everybody thought like, you know, you make some money, you become successful, then you're going to be happy because you're going to be able to take care of your family and you're going to have money, you know, you're going to be happy. And now that I did all that, it's like, damn, I'm empty as hell. It's like almost if, if you get it, then you're not that supposed whole time, to be Because that whole time I was just grinding. That whole time I was just grinding. I wasn't worried about being happy. I thought the money would make me happy. I thought success would make me happy, you know. Financially free, all that would make me happy. And so it's like now I'm at a level it's like, man, I got I could do whatever I want. I got everything I want. But I'm I'm empty as hell. And it's like I be telling people, man, I trade this shit. But in the same token, it's like I always tell kids, like, while you grinding, while you building for yourself, just make sure you happy. Make sure you know yourself. You really love yourself, you happy because now I can't I can't I can't talk to nobody. And nobody not trying to hear that shit. You know, they, they say, man, what? You you dropped two shoes last year. You got your clothes in 14 states. Man, you know what I'm saying? You, what do you your, got your to mother, be depressed about? Your mother quit yeah. a job. Yeah, why you, why? Everybody loves you, bro. You you can go out and say what's up to any girl. And she's, you know, and it's like, that's not even the reality, bro. Like, but it's like, man. Yeah, you got to be super. They not, they you're, not, you're not yeah, allowed they not to feel that. anymore, They not right? trying to hear that shit. They like, man, what? That's what first thing people going to tell you. Man, you don't got nothing. But that's like how we were conditioned, like coming up in a black household, like that's how we conditioned, man. And it's real sad how we don't recognize mental health, you know? You tell you grow up telling your mom, your grandmother, like, I don't feel I don't feel well in my in my mind. You know, I think about killing myself and all this other stuff. And they're gonna tell you, no, you're blessed. Stop thinking like that. The, and I that's the a, end of it. I had a guest on <laughs> Toughen up, tighten up, you gonna be all right. Yeah, I had a guess. Blessed. I'm talking God about that is same watching thing. you. Don't you 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 going against God when you feeling that way? It's like, Damn. what? I can't help how I feel. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we grow up not knowing how to express ourselves or not being able to um, accept people that that do express themselves or people who are emotional or people to talk. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never had that. I ain't never have, um, you know, especially like a black man like console me. Mm-hmm. When I was having a problem, you know what I'm saying? Well, I never had nobody say, you know, just just listen and, you know, talk how you feel, what's going on, why you feel that way. You know, I, I ain't never had that. And so now it's like people, everybody like, man, therapy, therapy, therapy. And I'm going to get around to it. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like I got to get past that. I got to get past myself. Because it, it's crazy to... I feel like therapy is undivided attention. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's crazy. I got to pay somebody for the undivided attention when I got all these people that love me. Mm-hmm. These people that could really help me, you know what I'm saying? That could be there day to day. I don't got to pay for I guess okay. maybe, I've never been to therapy either, but I guess it's different because it's someone completely detached from everything. Yeah. And they provide some sort of insight or anything. But I feel like that's valuable too, though. Like somebody with, with just no bias. Yeah. So I, I understand like therapy though. I'm I'm getting to understand it, but I just ain't got around to it yet. Every time I make an effort, it's always something in a way. Well, it ain't in a way, but it's just something that I need to get through. That are, you I feeling like get dis- through. are you feeling like disconnected from people or something? Yeah, my social life is shit, man. Like I used to be a real big social life, always out. I used to always have something to do. Um, people used to always like hit me up, like they wanted to have me around, you know what I'm saying? Why not? I was a fun person. And now it's like I, I find myself at home all day. If I'm not at home, I'm DJing. If I'm not DJing, it's a pop-up shop. If it's not a pop-up shop, um, it's something for the kids of the community. I don't have 
you know, hobbies no more. I don't, my friends, like, they hit me up, but, you know, they got their own lives, you know what I'm saying? And I just be like, man, what, did, what happened? You know what I'm saying? And that, that'd be, like, depressing, too, because it's like I don't, got, I don't know what to do with my life. I mean, it's crazy. Like, I don't know what to do. It's like I don't even be having enough energy or motivation to get up and do what I love, like, just go out and take pictures sometimes. And sometimes I just try to fight through it and just do it anyway, but I go right back to, like, just feeling, like, empty. It's interesting how much lonelier life gets as you get older. Yeah, or just... As as you can make more money, man, more money, more problems. All those cliches are true. Really? Yeah, I have, I have way more problems than I ever had being broke. <laughs> I mean, when when their problem is, it's like people could be questioning your presence for the bad, wrong reasons, and and everything too. It's like it's it's like, do they want to see me or they want to see me? It's like yeah, then the brand started taking over, yeah. and, and it got to the point where it was like, and I don't blame them. It was like friends and family. Every conversation we was having was it was just eat. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody give a fuck about Malik no what more. What are you gonna do? Hurt you make a lot that's of money? That's how that's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? Well, it was like, what's next? Or my coworker said they wanted this shirt. Well, I seen somebody with this shirt on, and they just talking about eating. Like it was a period of time where, where it was like probably like two years. Like nobody asked me like, how you feeling, bro? Like how how how, how you doing? Yeah. It was always how's business. How, it was never like how you doing? How you feeling? What's going on? Like you know what I'm saying? So. That's why I tell people, like, man, take care of yourself. It's easy to get caught up on that other side. I've been on both sides of that where I have friends and I always talked about business. Mm -hmm. And eventually they'd lash out and be like, you never asked me how I'm doing. I'm like, damn. And it wasn't until then I kind of had the perspective shift. And I was like, yeah. it is important. Even no matter what your friends are doing and how cool it is, it's like you're still a person at the end of the day who has to deal with shit. And I feel like I analyzed stuff. So I analyzed all that as, like, you know, true colors. I wasn't mad at nobody, but I'm like, yeah, it ain't, it ain't, my life ain't about me no more. And that's cool. But at the same time, it was like, I wish I had somebody to, that 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 um just to care for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You don't got a girlfriend? Nah, man. I don't got no it's hard to date. Cause like I if somebody if somebody know who I am already, like it's impossible to date them. Put me in your story. No, it's not even me. like that. No, I know how to. I know how to move through them types now. Like I said, like I, I was seventeen with a BMW. I know little clout munchers. Yeah, I know the when girls just want the clout, all that. So I don't really. I don't have that problem. It's just like if somebody already know who I am. I'm young, successful, in the city. I'm a socialite. You know, I'm I'm bad news. You know what I'm saying? I got all the girls. Or if I say something, I remember. Like I know, like. If if I do if I am blessed enough to go on a date, I go on a date and tell a girl how I feel and it sound good, and it just be like real genuine, and then it just be like, oh, but you tell that to everybody, because yep. To, if anybody tell you like I'm a socialite, but I'm a shy dude when it comes to the ladies. Like the only girls I ever talked to was the girls that I knew already liked me. You know what I'm saying? I don't just go up to strangers and you know just try to yeah, unless I just look at them as like friendly. You know what I'm saying? But if I see a girl on site and I look at her in that, you know, in that different light, it's like, you know, somebody I would date, I'm not going to say shit to her. And, but it's like, they don't know me. So it's like, man, you the popular dude. And all the conversations they had with all other girls, it's like, man, everybody likes me and, or everybody likes me. But I'm like, but to me, it's like living in my world. It's like nobody, none of them girls ever say anything to me or... It's not as easy as you think. Or oh, my phone don't ring as half as much as you think. Like I, yeah. I know how it could seem that way, cause you know, like I'm not a bum. You know, I'm attractive dude. I'm, I'm out here doing my thing. I'm young. I know how it could seem that way, but that's not the reality. So a lot of girls don't even get the chance to get to know me. They just, they, they got their preconceived notions, and that just, it just, it, just, it, it becomes toxic. You know, it's only but so much mm -hmm. I could look past. I be letting stuff slide. Like I get real offended when I'm on a date and they try and and a girl makes an assumption or try to tell me that like I got a bunch of women, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's like me going on a date and saying, "You fucking mad, yeah, dude?" Yeah, it's I, bet, you're good I bet I bet all the I bet all the wizards trying to date you. I bet all I bet you only date NBA <laughs> and NFL dudes. You know what I'm saying? 
Dude, you I know, know exactly. I know, it's, it's like they it's assume. Like me, it's like me going on a date saying that. You know what I'm saying? I, I know you fuck rappers. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't go on a date saying that. So it's like, how could you say just because I'm successful? You said that to every girl. It's like, young what? and Yeah, it's like, I'm just telling you how I feel. But yeah. if you can't see past that, then you just caught up in the hype. And so I've been getting girls that's just been caught up in the hype. And so I can't, I can't date nobody. And so when you going through shit and you telling your friends, they like, yeah, I'm here for you. But I'm like, man, it ain't the same. <laughs> I don't get it. I've dealt with that a little bit. With a little bit of micro cloud I have, the girl be like, oh, you tell it to everyone. I'm like, you tell it to all your models. You probably, I'm like, I'm like, no, I, I really don't. And they assume nah, that I you say, have all but I, these girls. But I do girls. say good things when I feel yeah. good about somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm you saying? Know what I don't it? got a list of phrases. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you, I'm telling you how I feel. Shit. <laughs> back, but back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Before I was average Joe, I ain't have no problem. Like, that's when I was really a player. That's when I... Never had a problem with ladies, you know. I always had a girlfriend Bro, you, if I wanted one. You gotta date a girl with clout. That's a problem. In, uh, you gotta date a girl who's like on your level of shit. That way man, she gets it. Ain't nobody on my level. Ain't nobody on my level. Then bro. leave DC out of here. I ain't man. never, I ain't never met nobody on my level. That's scary though. That's my age. And that's why I be saying all the time. Cause it cause when it be time to like when it be time like for invitations and Shit like that. I remember one time. That, I remember one time. It was like, like I was looking for somebody that was that was a female doing the same thing as me, and I couldn't find nobody in the city. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody that's out here in the community doing their thing. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a well known name. Like all we got is little bacon bear. Like I don't know no other you know girls you know that's making noise in the city. Like, and I don't blame them. Like a lot of women don't really. That's not the initiative and like getting that public light. They just want to do their work, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Get it done. But yeah. it's like, it ain't, I don't know anybody on my level. I've never dated nobody on my level or that understands, you know, like the life. Um, but that's why I, I mostly got to date models because they get it. They get the attention. They, they, they get it because they get the same, they get the same insecurities from men, you know, like, Oh, I'm not good enough for you. I bet you got all these just because they really attractive and got a lot of followers. Mm -hmm. So though, I'm able to connect with them on that level, but a lot of models just be like bombs too, man. They're, they're just good looking on camera. Yeah, and they besides that, they just they, they, they no just job, watch like the office all day and shit. No like, income. Like they just waiting for somebody to like hit them up. They're not really like hustlers. They, they're like trying to that. catch that wizards wizards player baby. That's what they're trying to do. But they not though. See, they're that's not. what I'm saying. That's the that's the that means like triple rapping it. That's what everybody thinks. Everybody thinks, you know, they just waiting on that. But from dating models, like, they really could care. Most of them could care less about athletes or your money or all that. They really just, like, want so much for themselves, but they don't got the work ethic. Some of them do. Some of them do, but... I mean, if it comes to you, because you're good-looking. Like, like, like I said, I only been dating models, because those are the only ones that could, like, stick around for real. And the only reason why we, we never been in a relationship, because it's like, man, you're not... You're not a good enough balance. And, you know, I try to put them in It's positions. like they get they get that side that you get from the women, but they don't get... No, Instagram just... Really, Instagram just killed them, bro. No, no, but, but they don't get... They don't get all the business and everything else you do. It's like there's like that depth besides, okay, you got to have a lot of attention too, but it's like, what else are you doing? They don't want that. No, really, it's... A, um. So they just been finessed out of their out of the position because of Instagram. They see girls on Instagram with... Nice clothes and nice apartments. They travel, and all they got to do is promote something and take pictures. You know, that's what they think, you know, so they just waiting on their moment. Let mm -hmm. me build my followers up, and all these people going to pay me to promote, and that's how I'm going to live my life. But reality is... Work like that. Half of them are promoting that shit for free just so they got some free clothes or free makeup. Yep. They don't get no money. Barely. And they got to take frequent trips to see men that... Fund their lifestyle, and I know this from being in the life. Like it's, it's models that kept it a hundred with me. Like this is how these girls, this is how these girls get their money. I know for a fact this person, such and such and such, they try to recruit me. They gonna try to put you. They try to put you on a flight to Dubai, and you got you a sponsor. You know what I'm saying? Dang. That's the life of an Instagram model. And so they go and they get that check from that guy, and yeah, they come back. They, yeah, come back and make it seem like oh they. They making a life off of being a brand ambassador. Like, no, the fuck you not. It's like it's like wait, you live in Georgia. Kim Kardashian is getting million really dollars a post. Not not your favorite Instagram model. They're not they're getting two hundred and fifty dollars a post. Yeah, people And they probably posting confused. three a week. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like those but so many girls, like 
they glamorize that. They're like, damn, I want to be just like that. And then and you, you get to date, you know, athletes or whatever. And they, they, they those Instagram models' life just seems so sweet. But those, like, it's not real, man. And they just all being finessed. And I don't know what's the outcome. I guess we just got to see, like, eventually if they going to find some work ethic or these girls just going to go to work. Hopefully Literally. they turn that into. Hopefully they turn their their ass into a brand or something. Yeah, I'm Create all for some it. makeup Man, you can make or create money something. Off your body, it's like I ain't, I'm I'm not the type of person to be like that's when gym, like if you can make money off your body and all that like your God given shit like hell shit, yeah, hell do yeah. it. Some models do. Just do different. It. But don't play yourself. Like don't be a bum out here. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. You out here just cute. That's it. You know what I'm saying. You can't do nothing on your own. You you can't be independent. You can you can't pick up the check if you wanted to. You know, that's not that's why I don't, I definitely don't support that, and so that's why me and all my models really fall off because they just don't they don't meet me halfway. Are you worried it's not in DC? Like you got to go to like a bigger city to find someone who's on that shit, like the, on that grind so on I'll their. Probably path, get like, out the country, man. Really? Yeah. You, you ever think you're gonna see yourself getting out of DC, like moving to New York or something like that? Nah, I will probably have a spot somewhere else, but yeah. like when it comes like time to settle down, family and shit, I'm gonna be right here. Word. For sure. Boy, man. Well, shit, dude. I feel like we covered a lot of shit today, yeah. man. It was sweet talking to you, man. Yeah, this was cool, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Likewise, man. I feel like I was being suffocated by this goddamn incense the whole time. But besides that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm used here. to the incense, man. This, like my first barbershop I used to go to, they always had incense burning. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm used to incense. Oh, my God. It looked like we smoked a blunt up in here, but we <laughs> didn't smoke a blunt. So it's kind of disappointing. Nah, it's all good to me. I appreciate it. It does smell good in here, man. Well, dude, is there anything like. Coming up, you want to like talk about any like is your charity? I'm the doing? wrong person to ask that, man. I, know, I was just curious. I'm every curious. time, no, every time people ask me that, like, um, I wish like my brother or somebody from my like team, like your marketing dude, because I always be like, you know, um, just stay tuned. Really looking forward to my school, and then they come out the cut like, man, what you tripping? You just did this, you just did that, you got this coming up. But I will say, um. Eat Day is coming up, you know what I'm saying? Eat Day, we celebrate now. I don't know how soon it's going to be out, but we celebrate now fourth summer, uh, June 21st, Howard Theater. It's going to be a big-ass party. That's cool. um, everybody just come through, have a good time, but I'm I'm doing so much. I'm I'm making moves every day. I'm never becoming stagnant. Like, if anything, I'm turning it up every day. I went from progress is perfection and recognizing that is 1%. And now I'm working on like 3% a day. So that's that's where I am. And um, it's really like it's really like a bunch of things I could tell you I'm up to, but I really can't think of none of them right now. Nah, but, <laughs> and just, but uh, oh, yeah, we got the um, next shoe coming out in December. That was, that's like the question I always get. Wait, man. Shoe? What are shoes? What are shoes? What are shoes? So last year we dropped two shoes in New Balance. This year we dropping one shoe. But it's coming out in December and it's going to be more pairs. So more people can get it. So oh, I guess shit. you know I just completely forgot to talk about was the whole thousand dollar jacket. Oh yeah, we could talk about that. We yeah, talk about that. I, don't so know. I feel like that's someone who listens, but oh fuck, why didn't he ask him that question? No, nah, the thousand dollar jacket. So um What is the deal thousand dollar jacket? That was a flex when you did that. I ain't I didn't I didn't design them thinking they was gonna be a thousand dollars. So I I put out I put out varsity jackets before, um, charged a reasonable price. They didn't even sell out. Um I had got I had got um I basically got like a plug on different colors, you know what I'm saying, for the varsity jacket. So instead of making more varsity jackets just not to sell, I was like, you know, I'm going to do something special for my team. It's like a Christmas gift. So I, I let them see the colors, and I was like, oh, y'all design y'all jacket. You know what I'm saying? Pick out your own colors. That's so he sick. picked out the crazy colors and shit. I bought the jackets. When they came in, I took a picture of them and put it on Instagram, and then my Instagram was going crazy. Everybody was like, I want a jacket, I want a jacket, I want a jacket, and shit like that. And I had promised my team, I was like, these one-on-one, y'all going to be the only people with them, exclusive. Everybody going to be pressed for y'all's jacket. But also during this time, I was playing a college tour. And when we first went on the college tour, we just did a pop-up shop at a bunch of different HBCUs. But I was like, that's that's BS. So I was like, I want to do a pop-up shop, a seminar, and I want to give away a scholarship just so the kids could come to the seminar and they can get this, you know, this knowledge I'm giving away. Damn. So... That was it. So I was like, I got to figure out a way to get some money. So um, every time I'm going out of town, like I'm probably going to do something today or tomorrow because I'm about to be out of town. Every time I go out of town, I try to just do something to 
create con I mean create some type of content to get traffic while I'm gone because I don't tap into my Instagram that much. You know what I'm saying? So I always try to have like a new release that I post or something. I just, I just I, want people talking. I don't think people n- n- maybe don't know, but what happened was one day, I mean, I'm glad you explained it, but what happened was one day you posted screenshots of yeah. like on your feed of, of some varsity jackets and you said these are $1,000. People were and freaking crazy, the yeah. fuck out. In my mind, I'm thinking that's all I wanted though. Yeah, and that was that was some that was some good ass marketing. Like I told you, all the cliches are true. Any publicity is good publicity. I just that's... wanted to, I just wanted dialogue. I just wanted to create some type of dialogue while I was in LA. Time difference and shit. I was like, so I'm I'm uploading the picture, and um, first I was gonna upload it like, yeah, one on one jackets, um, really, you know, exclusive, whatever, whatever. Just so people be like, damn, how can I get it? Or just people could be sending it to their friends, like, man, you heard about these jackets? Or a bunch of people could just be coming, like, when are they going to release? Like, everybody keep commenting that. But then I was like, man, you know, I did make a promise to my team, and I am trying, you know, get this money for this college tour. So I was like, fuck it, $1,000. <laughs> but my, my, um, my, 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 my logic behind that was like, I'm going to challenge people. I knew that was a challenging price. So either they not going to sell, and I get to keep my promise, and then I just got to uh, figure out a way to fund the college tour. And then I was looking at it like, you know, these are like beautiful jackets. Like, I don't care if they don't sell. I would spend the rest of my life gaining weight just so I could wear all of them. Shit. <laughs> I don't care. Or these joints would be sitting in my store and I'd just be admiring them. Like, I don't care. Like, I love them that much. Like, y'all don't got to have them. The response you know was crazy. Y'all don't got to have them. So I was like, you know, $1,000 and I knew it was going I knew it was going to be the people saying, I, I knew everything. I knew everything they was going to say. I knew the people that would support me was going to say, oh, yeah, you know, quick to go to Gucci. I don't ask for discounts with them. Y'all don't question their prices. I knew what everybody was going to say. But I also knew that they was going to sell because I did this before. Like, when I first started off, um, one of my artists that used to paint my hats, it's so funny. I didn't even think about this, but she was going to L.A. too. <laughs> this was like two years ago. She was taking a trip to L.A. and she had these hats that she had painted for me. And it was a design I had thought of. I was like, draw the metro map on a hat. And she was like, yeah, that's tight. So she did it for me. And she was like, um, yeah, I'm about to go to L.A. tomorrow. Here go the hats. I was like, how much? She was like, 80. I was like, what? You selling these for 80? <laughs> I was like, man, these $500 hats. She's like, Malik, I'm I'm going out of town tomorrow. I don't have no money. I need some, you know, pocket money. I was like, look, this was like nine o'clock in the morning. I was like, we're not gonna do five hundred. We're gonna do two fifty. If I don't sell these, it was three hats. If I don't sell these three hats, um, for two fifty, I'll give you two fifty myself per hat. You know what I'm saying? So I got on Twitter that day and I was like, that's that's uh, start some controversy. So I got on Twitter. I was like, all these hats, one on one, exclusive, two fifty. Just left it there. And it was going crazy. What? 250? What? So I knew at the end of the day it was going to be that person, mm. that person to buy it just because everybody's talking about it, that person to buy it because everybody knows it's $250 now, the person to buy it because they understand what I'm doing and they they like, why not? It's worth it. The person that, you know, that just appreciates the artistry and appreciated somebody pushing the bill. Like I knew it was going to be all these type of different people. So... The haters and everybody that was talking negative, they was doing all the work. They sold the jackets. Yeah, they weren't retweeting it. Not the, it yeah, the people it. that liked the jacket, they wasn't promoting it. <laughs> the people that didn't like it was promoting it. And like I know from the hats, the three hats that sold, only one person that I, I knew bought a hat. The other two people before that didn't even know about the hats or the brand. So it was like... <laughs> they just bought them because of, the, of the hype. Because they did, yeah, the hype. They heard about it. They heard about it through the people that were mad. <laughs> That's so slick. <laughs> so it was like, everybody think they shoot me down and all that shit, but they really just like... And then... And that was two weeks before the jackets even released. That whole weekend, bro, I'm... I'm swear for God, I'm looking at my, um, my sales online and it's going crazy. Like, my impressions on Instagram is going crazy, but like... The the sales, the online sales were going crazy because people were like going clicking the website anyway just to see if the jacket was there, if they could buy it real quick. Or Did it sell? Just to like, see like what what eat was about. And before they left, I guess they just bought some. Shit. But like that was like one of my busiest weekends online ever. That's you know dope. what I'm saying? So I knew what I was doing. Um took one on the chin because it's it's people out here that's still not educated. Um once I came out with the college tour last month and 
I said, you know, thank you to everyone that bought a jacket. Uh, the, you know, the money I made from the jacket helped fund the tour, you know what I'm saying? Because we had to have rentals, hotels, and then we was doing, like, the um, the scholarship, too. So I was like, you know, thank you. And, you know, nobody nobody apologized, but people was just like, man, I'm glad I, I'm glad I was defending you. You know, I knew it was something good. They you know just felt saying? like they were just a bunch of silent assholes everywhere. Yeah, it. it was just a bunch of silent. Like, and that's not, that's a big problem with people because it was it was. It, I kind of wish that I kind of wish that I could have did it different because, like I said, with everything I do is like, what are we? So, what are we telling the kids? And I feel like that day we told kids like, don't level up, don't 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 try to do better. You know, you're doing good, but don't do better. You know what I'm saying? Other people doing it, other designers that's been doing it, Gucci or whatever, they charging $2,000 for a varsity jacket. You can't do that, though. There's a day they had to do that. You come from yeah. here, you come from here, you 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 stay in line. I feel like that's what they were trying to tell me. Like, no, you you stay in line. Don't 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 get carried away. You're going to be selling $40 shirts for the rest of your life, you hear me? Or whatever. Like, I feel like that's what the people were trying to tell me, and that's what they were showing the kids. And... By going along with it, I was showing the kids like, nah, hell nah. Streetwear brands could sell a thousand dollar jackets. It's whatever value you put on it. Don't let nobody tell you your value. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Period. And and that's the thing with like the whole free free thinking, free speech thing. Like I'm I'm a supporter of Kanye West, you know what I'm saying? Um yeah, I feel like too. it's I feel like it's it. I feel like we 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 sending kids the wrong message. If we saying, okay, you come from here, this is what you have to represent. Fuck, fuck about how you feel. This is what the majority of the people of your people feel, so this is how you should feel. This is what you should represent. And that's not fair. Because now, even before I was, you know, popular, famous, I was always the person to say, well, why don't you do it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember like the other day, like I posted like, you know, I'm, I'm, I did some spring cleaning. I'm giving away some clothes. Um, just come down to the store. You can pick up whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. And somebody posted, why don't you Why don't you go around D.C. and D.C., Maryland, Virginia and give it to homeless people? And I'm like, bro, why don't you? <laughs> the fuck? I'm already, meet me, I'm already giving the clothes away. The hell? It's, but it's like, I, like, it's people out here that rather tell you what to do than do it their damn self. Like, yeah. you mad, if you don't like my voice and, and how many people I'm reaching, make a voice for yourself and, and, and take all those ears from me then. Don't tell me what to say. Don't tell me what to do. That's dead. Don't I'm tell me what my prices that, should be or anything I'm, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason why you love me. That's the only reason why I'm here, because I'm myself. You know what I'm saying? So don't. If 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 anybody out there think they could buy me, and that's why, and that's and that's one thing, that, that, and nobody never gonna be able to say because I hit man, I'm in a barber shop the other day, and somebody like, I forgot who they was talking about. They was like, yeah, you know, you know, the white people bought him. I'm like, man, whatever, because at the end of the day, black people they don't want you to, they don't want, they don't want you to sell yourself, or they don't want the white man to buy you, but they definitely. If they if they can if they can get you they can get you for a bargain your own people will get you for a bargain for free matter of fact so it's like nah y'all can't buy me if you buying my clothes because you want me to say whatever the fuck you want me to say then stop buying my clothes please because I'm that's never going to influence my mind why would you know they say that the white man buy you that's what they say when you get to it when you get to a oh, high like, level like, like you sold yeah, out yeah, like you, you sold, sold out. out you know what I'm saying he bought like you know what I'm saying. You know, you know, he, he bought him. Even then, what's selling out? What's when making Kanye that had money? put on a hat, you know what I'm saying? You know, they, you know, they bought him. That you know what crazy. I'm saying? But what if he just really is a Republican and that's how he feel? The fuck? If anything, we should be teaching our kids how not to be influenced by propaganda. Like, that was the biggest thing we missed. There were so many people that taught kids to be mad at a fucking hat, bro. Kinda that's weird, embarrassing. It? It's worse than where it's embarrassing. It's people out here that taught kids to be mad at somebody if they're wearing a hat. A hat. Not that they said something to you, did something to you, they they doing something to change your life or, you know, harm you. A hat. Like we let a hat divide us. A hat us. represents all these things about that a person. Hat. And like, just like mm. and just like the N word, we yeah. gave it all the power. You know what I'm saying? If if we if we all as soon as those hats came out, if Kanye would have did it a little bit earlier and we all would have 
Ben wearing, you know, Make America Great Again hats. Oh, it, it wouldn't have made it cool. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't represent what it represents today. You know what I'm saying? But we let it represent that. We let that man put on a hat and say that's the new N word and say now we're offended and we teaching kids to be offended by a hat propaganda, man. And he did the same thing. You know what I'm saying? He just all he had to do was get people talking. That's how he won. Even then, it's, it's sad, bro. I like it's you so said you're a Kanye supporter. I've always been a Kanye supporter as well. And okay. like, and if he's introduced, I don't agree that with everything thing, he say. I don't agree with everything he says or does, but I respect it because somebody has to do it. He does great. We can't keep. That. We can't keep building machines. You know what I'm saying? We we building our kids to be machines, man. It's like he thinking freely. He doing, you know. And you see where he come from. It's like that's been my man. That was the the first first CD I I ever got was college dropout. You know what I'm saying? I felt like that's like my family, my cousin. You see where he come from. Um, I read his mom's books, you know, the books about him, him living overseas and the only person he was able to talk to for a year and a half was his mother because he didn't know any Mandarin. You know what I'm saying? So when you see that relationship that him and his mom had, and I, I can relate to that because it's only been me and my mom. And, and then he loses his mother to a, something so tragic, like something that... It was only because of his success, you know what I'm saying? She died off of surgery yeah. that she was only be able to pay for because, yeah, about it like that. because he was successful, you know what I'm saying? That's traumatizing as hell, just to lose your mom and just and then to have that on your conscience. It's terribly and ironic. Then that happens. He was engaged at the time. She left him. Um he gets to acting a little bit different. And what do we do? Say, oh man, he gone crazy. Yeah. We neglected this man. Black people neglected this man. You know what I'm saying? We saying he's going crazy. He tripping. You know what I'm saying? That's what everybody said. And so when he comes out and he's wearing a Republican hat, black people want to be mad and offended. Nah, that's the same dude that y'all just turned y'all back on. When he lost everything, y'all said he went crazy instead of just, you know, giving that man some love, you know, showing that man support. You know what I'm saying? He started tripping and y'all said he went crazy. And I always tell people like, if you don't like Kanye, you don't like me, bruh, because my mother is my life. And if y'all think that's crazy, I can only imagine what I would do if I was to lose my mother. You know what I'm saying? Y'all think he went crazy? He, he handled it very well, if you ask me. Shit. He came out with 808s and heartbreaks. He switched his sign up a little bit. It was different, yeah. But he handled that shit very well. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if y'all was to treat me how y'all treated him, I don't know if I would even be like, like him. You know what I'm saying? Because like, it's like... It's the same dude that y'all be mad at, you know. Like every time he do something, y'all y'all don't even want to claim him, but y'all but now y'all want to claim him because he 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 on the other side. Like, come on, man. We teaching our kids the wrong things. We teaching our kids to fall in line, fall in line, basically. But also, you're not you're not writing someone off because of one aspect of their opinion. You know, that's what it's I'm like saying. And it's like, as an artist, I hope and pray people separate who I am from what I from what I do. And that's what I do for all artists. That's why I don't get mad at these people. Like, why do we care about what Kanye West or Jay-Z or any rapper is saying? They're not the politicians making a difference. You know what I'm saying? We hold them to a higher standard than our own politicians. And it's like, for for what? That's an artist, bro. Like, why, are you, why do you care? Like, you expect them to say something smart? Like you expect him to say something politically correct? No, they, he's a fucking rapper. He's just making music. Like. Yeah, like yeah, he just making music and he got his own opinion. You don't hold it. You don't hold it to the. You don't hold it. Don't it. It, it, it should not hold the same weight as an actual politician. Someone's educated on this. Someone who who has the power to really go change some shit tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So when, like I said, I don't agree with when Kanye do say something wild or crazy, and I'm just like, all right. You said it, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it don't it shouldn't make a difference. Like, you know what I'm saying? You shouldn't say, oh, you wrong, shut the fuck up. Like, all right, bro, you tripping. I'ma teach my kids, like, understand, like, I'm I'm gonna teach my kids how to identify ignorance. And ignorance doesn't doesn't deserve any type of energy. Period. So when people are being ignorant, you don't you don't feed that fire because that's all they want. You turn the cheek and you ignore their ass. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way to deal with ignorance because when we talk about ignorance, we're promoting it and then it just becomes more and more relevant, man. Mm. And it's like, and I'm, I'm able to separate that. So I say, you know what? I like his, I like I like what he does. I don't agree with everything he says, but I love his music. I love his music because it changed my life. It My clothes start fitting different. I had a different level of confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like his music changed my life. So I'll never be able to, 
say, man, fuck Kanye, he tripping. Like, that's his mind, that's how he feel. I, I, I can see the course of his life and how it went. I don't blame him. Pray for him. Yeah, people are so quick to it. Just take this one idea you have and assume, like the hat, the, take that one hat you have and assume that's everything you're about. And it's, it's like, everything it's you're like about, no, man. it's like, how about you, it's what people should really do is question themselves and be like, what is this? And it's just sad really how they just switch up on you. Like, they just, they, they just so quick to forget. Cause like that whole, that whole jacket thing, man, that, that was, that was like, it was, it was a point in time where I was like, man. That was a Kanye moment it, for you. Nah, it, was, it was a point where I was like, it was a point where I was like, man, I'm helping these people out now and appreciate shit. Because it was the same people in the comments like, you know, I look at their page. I'm like, man, I've been in your neighborhood. Like, I know I've, I've made more, more of an impact in your neighborhood than you have in your own community. Damn. And you got the nerve to come at me. Like, this summer, this summer, football team, their season started in two weeks. They didn't have any equipment. Zero. Because D.C. Department of Recreations took their equipment because they wanted to join a more competitive league where the kids could travel. If they won a championship, they could travel to Florida. You know what I'm saying? That was a privilege for me growing up, playing football my whole life. The only way we was going to see Florida is if we won a championship. And those kids deserve to play for the same thing. But D.C. was so damn petty that they took the, the kids' equipment. The news station called me and said, look, the, the team reached out, and this is a rival team. This is one of my rival teams growing up. The team reached out. We've talked to the equipment company. They're willing to do they're willing to do a half off on the order. Shit was $17,000. I paid that shit in two days. You know what I'm saying? It's facts, man. That's what I'm saying. And then you got, but then you got people from that same community saying, uh, you see what happened? He sold out. And I'm like, these kids going to have, these kids going to, these kids are guaranteed a season for at least the next eight years with this equipment. And I'm the sellout. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't make my money back. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. 17,000, that don't, that's that's not normal for me. And and most people, most 26 year olds in my position, they see that they say, damn, I hope, you know, I hope it work out. Probably get five hundred dollars if that. And they go to the mall and buy a fucking Rolex, go buy a new car. I don't got none of that shit. That's 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 I stunt different. Two months ago, I paid three three single mothers, three single mothers um rent. You know what I'm saying? People forget all that shit. And as soon as I I try to do something for myself, level up for myself, oh, you switched up. You know, I'm the I'm the I'm public enemy number one, and that that hurt me for a minute. But then I was like, I can't let these these grown ass ignorant adults get in the way of all the kids who really gonna benefit from. It's interesting because you don't even shit. you don't even flaunt that you do all that nice shit. I don't, and it's like, and I probably had like one or two people in the comments that that said something like that, like that vouched for me and brought up those examples. But I'm not in no position to to, to be like, but look when I just did this, you know, because it ain't about that. I did it because I didn't do it because I knew I was gonna sell a thousand dollars jackets one day. I did it because shit, that was gonna be three hundred kids. On the street for three months, not doing nothing. You just changed a bunch of kids' lives. That's what I'm saying. Like, seriously. That's what I'm saying. But it's people, that, they so quick to forget that and say, oh, man. And there was people that didn't even know I did that, but just come and chime in, don't even do their research. You know what I'm saying? Don't even know who I am, what I do, and just say, and just think, oh, that's the dude that's been selling. And then, they, and then it was even people saying, you are a sellout because I, I work in War 7 and War 8, and those are the people that have your clothes all the time. And I told you earlier... Nobody in the hood ever paid full price. Like, they would say, those are your main supporters. Those are your number one supporters. I was like, no, my number one supporters are the people that pay $40 for a shirt, period. But most of those people, especially if you see them today with a shirt on, them shits was free. I gave it away. That's why you see my brand mostly in War 7 and War 8. Because those are the kids that need help. Okay. And those are the ones that I give my stuff to, close off my back. I wear shit one time and give it straight to them. You know what I'm saying? That's why you see it all the time. That's why they're so proud to wear it all the time because I'm looking out for them. You know what I'm saying? But people going to say what they want to say, and, you know, I just hope the truth come out. I know the truth might not come out while I'm here, but when they write my story, they well, it's, got— It's because you don't flaunt it. It's weird. It's like people they just know you for the jackets right. now. They don't know all this nice right, shit Right, they just do. know me for the jackets, and man. And it's like, I did my research on you. I would have seen that you did all this nice shit. Like— you, I did not know this. I would have seen it. I've oh, watched, yeah. I watched oh. interviews and stuff and all and stuff and you don't even mention it. And it's like, cause then people, cause then people say, Oh, that's, Oh, you just doing that to sell more shit. And I'm like, man, I, I, I'm from here, bro. 
I, I care about it. Like, I've lost friends. I started losing my friends when I was 10 years old. My best friend died two days after my 17th birthday. And it all came down to privilege. You know what I'm saying? I I didn't have to worry. I didn't have to worry about when I got home if I hit the switch and, and the lights was going to come on Damn. or if I opened the refrigerator and it was going to be a meal or if I was going to be able to take a, a bath before going to school. But like simple privileges like that is the shit that my friends had to worry about every day. You know what I'm saying? So if I could, if I could, you know, help that in any type of way, then that's what I'm going to do. And I feel like any stand up dude, anybody from where I'm from and, you know, raised how I was raised would do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So I don't do like community shit. Like that's why I'm saying I don't even promote it half the time because I don't want people to get it, get it fucked up. But in the same token, it's like I got to show face because a lot of people just write checks and that's that. But that's not impact. I got to get out there. I got to, like, the kids got to see. Like, I went out there. I said, I told the kids, like, I'm 26 years old. I'm from Edgewood. I'm about to pay for all y'all equipment. You could, I'm, 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 I'm a legal businessman. You could do this too. Mm-hmm. And matter of fact, not only you can do this, but make sure you, you recognize it as your responsibility when you get older to help somebody else out. I'm helping you out because I was, I had a privilege. I'm providing privilege to you because my mother provided the privilege to me. And you got to do the same thing for somebody else. That's why I show face. That's why I, I'm not just the type of person just giving them money and duck off. You know what I'm saying? But fuck, man, that's so. People got to educate themselves. Cool. The people that know, cool. the people that know, the people that's supposed to know, they gonna know. And unfortunately, like you know, it's, most of the people, they just I don't I don't blame them because they don't know. You know, yeah. forget them. One for, of the forget them. One of the last things I just want to say here is because we're gonna wrap this up soon is that um. First time I met you, not the E Enemy thing a long time ago, it was craziness, but you were doing the pop up um, the other weekend. Um, I really don't know where it was. What the, the, one you, the one I think you're at right now. Yeah, 4800. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I rolled yeah. up there and you had this kid selling literally this shirt. Yeah. I'm wearing it. And, and I thought that was interesting because here you are, a brand, and you had this kid selling his brand. Yeah. And I was like, that's competition. That's like my protege. I was, so. like, I was like, that's competition. I was like, a lot of people in that position. Sure, you help kids, but it's like, do you want to help them compete? And even even then, like I've had friends who, when I try to do something next to them, they were like, "Nah, it's competition. You're gonna take yeah. away." And to just to, to nah, see bro. you to see you do that for that young man, and, and to value the collaboration more over like the fact that like, what if I bought his shirt and I didn't buy I'm, your shit? Like, I'm cool with it's that. Like, it's like I was like I was like, you know what? I was like this this guy at least has, is 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 nice or he's like a stand-up dude about that. I was like, I yeah. respect the shit out of that. I'm all about that, that, cool. that whole each one, teach one thing. And I'm blessed, man. Like, losing everything was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Like, like I said, I only had the clothes I went home with in my camera. So I, I went from having a different pair of shoes to wear every day of the week to just one pair of shoes. You know what I'm saying? Everybody looking at me crazy on campus, like, because it was in the news and everything. So coming from that and just losing everything... Like now, all I just I just want to go to heaven. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my initiative. I I understand that this is just a stage where you get to prove yourself worthy for the next stage. So if I'm if I lose everything tomorrow or whatever, I'll be all right because I I did I did what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? One thing we all got in common in this lifetime, like you know, people frown on homeless people and all these people, and but I believe in God and He forgive you for your sins. And homeless people can make it to heaven just like rich people. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it, it, they probably get easy, faster access than rich people. Because it's like they they remain happy. They remain positive. They kept, they kept it going every day. And most of them are really, really helpful and really giving. You know what I'm saying? Way more giving than rich people. You know what I'm saying? So that's been my mindset. Like, I'm just trying to go to heaven. So it ain't about money or anything like that. Maybe once I have kids and a family, I take it more serious and lay down that foundation more. But like right now, it's like I'm just, you know, expending myself to everybody. And because, like I said, I, if I could help one kid, man, I did my job. Like I did, like I did what I was supposed to do. Shit, if, if it's that kid or if it's the yeah. other 15 kids in my entrepreneurship program. It don't matter. You like if I could save one person's life, shit, I did my job. I'm I'm good with that. 
Dude, I'm sure I'm sure you say that on my obituary, I'll be happy. I'm sure you said plenty of kids lesson out, but who knows, man? Like ten years some kid might come up to you like, bro, that time you bought us like football gear, it was either that or going to the streets. He was Straight like, up. I did this, I did this, and like you never know what the impact you're gonna have. Straight up. And it's I'm, like you could take it away from me, you could take it all away from me and, and I won't be the person crying. I'll be like, Man, it was a great run. Right, I what, did it. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I know old, and I know the universe or God would take care of me because I didn't do it so much, well, you know, I, for other people. Dude, Malik, man, it's been a pleasure sitting and talking with you. Yeah, man. thank you. I appreciate man. you. One of my favorite interviews. Taking the time coming out. <laughs> Damn, Shay's the best interview. I saw y'all the interviews. I was like, these are all garbage. No one's oh, doing this, man. One. It's my favorite one for sure. Thank you, man. It means a lot. <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, nah, we're gonna get a good one here. Uh, if anyone wants to follow you on social media um, or keep track of you or do anything, yeah, everything where, where do you want them is to go? Um, allhomage.com, A L L H O M A G E. Um, you don't gotta, you don't gotta buy nothing to support me. Tell somebody about it. Um, come to one of our events, volunteer, whatever. Just get involved, man. Awesome. Well, guys, that's it. That's the angle. If you don't eat, you die in the street. Elevate all the time. Hell yeah. Peace. All right, now I just got to stop it. Thank you, brother. Cool, man. I got some stickers for y'all. Dude, I'll happily take a sticker, man. Dude.